everybody, and welcome to So Mean. <laughs> Allegedly. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> wow, some crazy times we're living in. Some crazy times. You could say that again, sir. I don't even know how we're on here at the same time. No, it's weird. We share like the same brain. That we do. We do. I think we're actually Vulcan. You know, they're doing the mind meld. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> Isn't it like some, I don't know what it is. But. Yeah. Yeah. Part so of a secret cabal. Yeah. Today we're going to be doing the uh, part two of this. The part, uh, Crystal's part goes on for many parts. There might be four parts. Because uh, we, we're continuing on with Brooke Hauk, uh, Brooks Hauk interview. Mm -hmm. Um part two of that and then we might get started on Nick's interview with the detectives later but first we'll finish this one up and you'll actually get to see the part where Nick calls in you know it would be interesting to try to boost up the audio there because you can't he, the, the detective there could hear him mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it I mean it's very, it's loud even on this camera so you know in the room it was really loud yeah Yes, it is. Hey, welcome. Uh, the, I Tom. mean, the audio is not so wonderful, but yeah, yeah. Rail fix it. <laughs> I don't know. I do have another version of it that I think I tried fixing, but um, I don't know, so I don't want to just test it out. But welcome to Wanda, and yes, you too can be a channel member. Uh, one of these days, we—I don't know what we're gonna—we're we're trying to make it so that there's a channel membership, and then. Um, like we have so many of them that at the end of the month we can donate uh, chunks of money to uh, various charities and whatnot on this channel too. How do you like that? Yes. And one of the perks of becoming a member is you will get to share a brain with us. So there'll be a bunch of us and we'll all think the same, talk the same. We'll do all the same things in the chats. It's going to be epic, but you one, have to be a member for us to teach you how to do that. One channel. One brain, one mind. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, so funny. Okay, so, uh, oh wait, that's not even the one, but that's a preview of Nick. Let's see, let me get to, I think it was like an hour and two minutes, I believe. Where's that part where he was just sitting still? He was like doing nothing for a minute or something. Yeah, right here he's asked that question. He just sits there like a weirdo. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it because this is at, um, no, it's only 57. Let me see. Was that right around? There it is right there, this this little stretch. So maybe we, let's just lead into like that question and then. So this is an hour and twenty hour and twenty four seconds in. All right, you guys ready to go? We are ready. So we're going back to Crystal's boyfriend's questioning. That's where we are right now. They are questioning Crystal's boyfriend. We played some of it on the last show. If you haven't seen that, you can go back and catch the first part of that. Now we're gonna go with the second part of it. You know what's amazing, by the way, everybody, is I didn't have to do any screen editing at all of where chasing is. For some reason, every time I do a show, like she'll be a, a quarter mile away over here or the, you know. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> but also, I'm like over here beside the bitch. You know, up and, here. I, and I turned it on and boom, everything was right in place. <laughs> it was amazing. We got lucky today. Yeah. All right. So here we go. We're going to. Get part, uh, started on part two of the Crystal Rogers um, segment, and also the uh, this is Brooks Hout part two of him. Mm-hmm. Right then, they I don't not really a big deal for him. Right? No, and, it, and it's something that those people there we see once ever, sometimes every few years. So a lot of the people really hadn't. Some of them have seen her, and a lot of them have not seen her. Mm -hmm. You know, haven't met her. Sure. So like I said, it was a substantial amount of people. You're out there. You said you uh, did. You say you didn't stay for fireworks. No, we didn't stay that late. So you and Eli leave before dark. 
-hmm. but that's usually when people set off fireworks in, in, on 4th of July. Uh, and do you, you go home, you go to somebody else's house. And that was on Saturday? Yeah, that was Saturday. Do you go to mom's? Where, where do you go after you leave there? This part here, it's just, I hate these long pauses. It's just, it's weird. No, I think we rode, I think we rode with, uh, we rode with my mother over there. So maybe times? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we rode with her, and then I, then I went home after that. So you rode back to Mom's house with mm -hmm. her, and then you, uh, you didn't stay at Mom's, you went back to your house? Yeah, I didn't, uh... I don't know the exact I don't know the exact timing and all that right there, but I do know that I rode with uh, I rode with her over there to Fagan's house. Okay, and you left her house and went home. I don't know how, I don't know if I stayed there any period of time or not. I may have stayed there just a little bit. I don't think very much, but I might have stayed there a little bit. I'm not sure. I mean, you didn't stay the night there. No, no. Uh -uh. Did you go anywhere else after you left Mom's house before you went home? Not that I can remember. Okay. I think what would be a good idea for folks is to put a darn camera. <laughs> you think I'm joking. I'm being serious. You try to go know. back through this. Yeah. I need mean, to put a camera hard, in your vehicle and up there in front of you. You just live on tape and then you... Well, I'm not, I'm Did he say Doug Gum? <laughs> they should put a Doug Gum. <laughs> I don't know if he said that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they have those, Brooke. Yeah. I'm not asking you to recall every detail of your life, brother. But I'm just trying to... But it would, it would help me if I could. Well, it, well, just let me know if you want to say something or anything. All right? I will. Okay. It's kind of loud, the, uh, record, the playback. But, uh, listen, I, I couldn't tell you what I did two days ago. I couldn't tell you what I did before I started investigating this because I've been investigating this for three days. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not asking you to remember every single minute, but, you know, at a, and I realized that it wasn't a big deal for her to be gone for you, but, you know, most people can remember you know, most of the things they did during the day, not every single minute, but you remember going to Fabian's house, you remember mm -hmm. leaving Fabian's right, house, the house the mom's, yeah. right. and going, so if you went from mom's house to home, you'd eaten dinner at and Fabian's. I, and I met, I don't know if it was uh, her mother, I met her mother at the gas station somewhere, one of them days. Mm -hmm. Her mother, Sherry, mm -hmm. Crystal's mother, Sherry, and I don't know if Ashley was with her and other kids were with them, but I stopped at right there in front of Walmart mm -hmm. where I, go, where I get a bunch of fuel at up right there, that Murphy station across from Lowe's right there. Right. And I was on the phone with with uh, with either Ashley or Sherry one, I forgot which. Oops. And uh, hold on a second. I gotta they <laughs> said <laughs> You can still see it though. Just listen. I tell you what I've done too. I talked to Brooke sure what on happened. the phone hold on. at the farm. I talked to Brooke, her younger sister, uh, before I left because I was heading into town to get fuel at that point. So whatever time that I talked to Brooke, you'll know that I left. Mm -hmm. So make a note of that. You so were, I, you talked were to, I talked to Brooke on the phone, and that's when I was leaving, leaving the farm on 49. And I drove in 49. And then I made a right there on 150 and went up there to Walmart. And then I got on the phone with Sherry or Ashley. When I don't know whose phone they were on. Mm -hmm. But that'll help me right there because that's you can pinpoint an exact time. And then I pulled in there to uh, in there to that Murphy station. Mm -hmm. And then Sherry came up there to my window. Okay. And asked me uh, if if I'd seen Crystal. And this is a, this right here is after I have uh, I talked to Barbara Lane and I I sent her I called her a couple times. I don't think I got an answer. She's probably busy doing something. And then I sent her a text message. And after I kind of stayed on her, she knew that it was it was serious because it'd been longer than normal when she'd done this before in the past. And this and was Saturday? I'm not sure you'll have to all oh, so much stuff happened all so quick, you'll just have to mm -hmm. dissect that's the reason I've given you all my stuff, my sure. yeah, yeah. you can dissect all that and figure you know, mm -hmm. get an exact time. So I called Barbara and I sent her a text message. I talked to her mother at Walmart. 
um, up there at that Murphy gas station. I had Eli with me then, of course, I had him with me all the time. And um, she wanted to look at Eli. She said, where is Eli? I said, right there. And then she spoke to him and she looked at him and said hi. And he said hi and that was it. So that was kind of interesting right there. I just noticed when he said, oh, you know, Eli was with me all the time. I mean, he was with, was with me then. And mm-hmm. then realized, wait, wait, yeah, of course, because he was with me all the time. I mean, no more, a uh, person wouldn't say that unless that wasn't true, right? Like, right. you just would have said it and mo- kept moving on. But right. He, had to, he wanted to clear Eli was it. in the car. Yeah. He could have been somewhere, I mean, but there might have been times where he had Eli stay somewhere else and he was doing something else. When Eli, well, I mean, typically Crystal had Eli, so Eli was not with him all the time. Yeah. You know, he wants to be this great dad, you know? I mean, remember, she would go to the sex parties, and he would take all the kids because, you know, he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Which probably means he was at sex parties, and she was with all the kids. <laughs> Likely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she just asked you where, if you'd seen Cherry, and you told her no. No, she asked me if I saw so Crystal, sorry. Crystal, yeah, my name's confused. Um, so Sherry asked you if you'd seen she, she was the only one. Everybody else stayed in her vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, and then she walked over to my truck. And when you told her, what, I haven't seen her, don't know where she is, and she just said okay and asked me. No, about she, thought that, she thought that the wisest thing for us to do was she said she was going to go to the police station. Okay. So and I told her that. I think at that point I'd already talked, in, I'd already talked to uh, Barbara. I believe I'm not sure Barbara Lane, and um, I'm, I'm not sure how I told the time periods. I don't know. I just don't know. That's fine. That's fine. So um, then I went home. So Saturday you went home after uh, the gas station. So you think that was I'm, okay? So you think the gas station was between leaving the farm and getting showered up? before you go to Fabian's? No, that's incorrect. Okay. Um, <laughs> so weird. You, so you weird. said you yeah. were leaving like that fuel. part was a huge yeah, deal. I did leave the yeah. farm to go get yeah. fuel. I don't That's not correct. That's not the story that I had put in my mind already. Yeah, you you sh- we don't care when you showered, sir. That isn't the story. Who's Barbara? Do you know who Barbara Lang is? No. I was trying to figure out who that was. I'm searching now. Was that like one of her friends maybe? Uh, because he's saying it was getting serious. So he, in the context of of Sherry saying, I'm going to need to go to the police. He says, oh, I think I'd already talked to Barbara Lang by that point. Hmm. So is she a police officer? I can't find one news article or anything else with her name in it. Hmm. Okay. Let me just type something in. I find that I will, uh, I'm guessing maybe it's one of her friends, but that's irrelevant to police. What, how's so. his last name is spelled H-A-H-O, well, how's it, how do you say it? H-O-U-C-K? H-O-U-C-K, how? That's what yeah. I thought, yeah. You don't see her anywhere. Does anybody else know? Maybe. No. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's like a weird. Yeah, he's mentioned her now twice. That he's talked to Barbara Lang. Who is Barbara Lang, and why is that relevant to this? I'm. It has to be one of her friends. Yeah. Except it seemed like he was referring to talking to the police so maybe she's like somebody that works at the that's what i was police thinking station? But I don't know. i'm gonna keep digging somebody we'll said they believe that was the aunt so, so, okay. so but that's just i believe she said she could be wrong so don't hold anybody by that so maybe somebody can find that out while we're playing this yeah i'm looking too so go ahead i don't know if, i don't know if that was friday i don't know if that was saturday that i got fuel I'm sure I did it with my card. I can prove what time that was. Yeah. Too. And so, so I talked to Sherry. Sure. Do you think it was this? Do you think you talked to Sherry the same day they reported her missing? You said she said yes, yes, yeah, yeah, she said yeah, yeah. Okay. The day, the day that yes, that, so they, that's, they reported her missing she, on Sunday. Then it was Sunday. I feel like whenever 
That's because Sherry told me she's going to the police station. Mm -hmm. Is Sherry the one that reported her missing? Mm -hmm. Sherry's. All right, what, I had a question from the media. From oh, yeah, Kathleen already answered. So it looks like he worked for the Nelson County. She worked for the Nelson County Sheriff's Office. So the assumption was right. Okay. Great. Thank you. The news that I wanted to ask you all think about who that you all said that a family member found her car. How does that happen? Rather than the police department, that as large as this county is, a family member. Well, that's a pretty big family, uh, and as I understand it, someone called someone who knew them called them and said there's a car that looks like hers on the parkway, and they went out there. Who was the family member that found that car? Look at, look at there's it's so obvious there's only a couple main highways and a lot of people live in the area could just drive by and see it it's almost like mm -hmm. he's trying to pin it on somebody else Ooh, now if absolutely because he's so <laughs> curious which family member yeah wow yeah, yeah. Am, I able, am i able to know that question oh, yeah. that answer you was i just have to look at my look back through my notes and see who it was um and i'm that's not great either, but uh, I want to say that it was. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was. You can look back at them. I'm not sure. It's I want to say it was a brother and nephew. I know we took elimination prints from one of them because they touched the car before we got there. So we took elimination prints from them, like we did from you, to rule out any prints that we mm -hmm. found in the cars being there, being that person. All right. Uh, so I want to say that it was one of her brothers. How I many did she have? She only had Casey's or Casey's. Brother. So I want to say it was her brother and maybe her dad that went out there. But I, I think it was her brother that somebody actually called. But that, that may be incorrect. I'll have to look at the notes. All right. But so Saturday evening, you went to Fabian's house. You had dinner. You went home. You're home all evening with Eli. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody not come leave. over? Anybody not? Yeah, yeah I feel like, yeah, Richie comes over to my house all the time. He's over every day. Who's Richie? Richie Riggs. He's my manager, my real estate agent. He lives next oh. door at 115 Glenview Drive. He's one of the people on that list. Okay. Um, so you go to bed Saturday night. You got Eli with you. Presumably, because uh, you said you guys went home from Fabian's. Not or, presumably, he was or, with me. Right. Well, I didn't want to put words in your mouth, so if he's with you, tell me. He's, he's, yeah, he's with me, yeah. He was um, with me. Again, not trying to offend, yeah. I just don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, I don't um, want you to either. So, so you and Eli go to bed Saturday night. You get up normal time Sunday morning. Do you all go to church? No, sir. Okay. Didn't so, go to church. Um, but on Sunday... I don't remember what we did Sunday. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to make it. Is Sunday when I came up here and talked to you that night or Saturday night? Uh, that would have been Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me make sure he's giving me what I need here. Yeah, you can hear his little phone beep, and they're giving him, feeding him questions based on what he's saying, what Brooks is. Mm. Um. Your phone's on my desk, that's what he was telling me. That's fine. I um, that. hope you had fun answering it. <laughs> he probably didn't answer it. <laughs> um, yeah, Sunday night you came up here and talked to me. That was after they found the car and everything. So, so sometime Sunday after 12 o'clock is when you talk to Sherry uh, at the gas station. Uh, I think, uh, and I'd have to look at your phone to see, but it, correct, and you may know or might know, but you called Barbara. You, you called her Barbara Lane. I just called her Barbara. That's all I've ever known her about. But Barbara Roby was a Ballard, right? Yeah. Uh, you called her um, and talked to her about Crystal being gone, or she called you? No, I'm the one calling her. Okay. Um, and what does that conversation sound like? I think the first time that I called her that... I don't think she answered the phone, so I left a message, and then I don't, I don't got a response, and then I sent a text message mm -hmm. to her, and that's when she called back, and I think she tried to call her, and she didn't get an answer. Okay. And you know. So, I, and I'm piecing things together from what they've told me as well. So, um, 
at some point you do talk to her on the phone, but when you get up Sunday morning and Crystal's still not home, or you're starting to get concerned, that's why yes, you call Barbara? That, yes, exactly. And that's the reason that I did call her. But before then, I'm, I wasn't alarmed. She'd she done this before. Right. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't alarmed. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So you call Barbara. Um, I knew I gave Barbara Lane more credibility than Sabrina or Brooke or any of them. Because I know them young girls, if Crystal tells them not to say nothing, you ain't gonna be able to beat it out of them. Right. And the, them girls are they're no, just the yes, yeah, they're just like especially to a guy if they're fighting, they're not. And I'm smart enough to know that. But I knew Barbara would say, "Hey, she don't want to talk to you, or she's fine. Just leave her, give her some time." I knew Barbara wouldn't keep me. She's a mature woman. Do you understand the mm -hmm. difference in what I'm? So she would at least I feel like let me know, hey, where I wouldn't have to worry. Right. She might not give me no details or nothing, which is fine, sure. but she would at least ease my ease my concern. And that's the reason I called her over sure. these other people, because I, I knew I'd get further with her. And at some point, so you do talk to her, and as I understand it, at some point she came over to your house. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Do you she's been there a few times since then. Right, but that particular day she came over to your house, was that before or after you talked to Sherry? Do you remember? I have no idea. No, no. That's fine. Um, so you said, they also, I don't even remember doing that. I don't even, I remember. So is Barbara his aunt? Or who, whose aunt is, somebody's saying maybe it's an aunt, but who is Barbara in relation to yeah, Brooks? And why is he able to like talk about her almost like they're friends or something? Let's see. So Castlin said that it was. Let's just double check here. She says she's under Barbara Roby, so I checked that out. No, I don't think it's his aunt. I mean, all the pictures on her entire profile. <sighs> yeah, it's Crystal's aunt. Um, mm, I see. They're all of like Crystal and Justice for Crystal, but he's saying he trusts her more than the rest of them. So maybe they had a nice relationship or something. Hmm. Okay. Barbara and him. Not. I don't see how anybody could have a nice relationship with him, but yeah i don't know i was trying to figure out if there was some way that somebody inside was could help him out or something but that didn't sound like it well much more this last little bit than i really ever had before mm -hmm. but i don't as far as talking to sherry at the gas station right. and then keeping everything synchronous i had no idea mm -hmm. none okay. well i mean i know that sherry was here at three o'clock thereabouts filing the report, the missing persons report. So that part I can kind of figure out, okay, so it was sometime before three o'clock that you talked to her at the gas mm -hmm. stations. I'm thinking probably, you know, closer to that time than farther away, not early in the morning, what have you. Um, and then, of course, fast forward to they find the car at five o'clock. Uh, out on the parkway and the, the sergeant responds out there and then he calls me and then I come out and start investigating and um, obviously I call you to come and talk to me about the you know the last time that you saw Crystal um, so that kind of builds my timeline obviously there's some gaps in there understandably um, but you know some of those gaps become really important uh, you know for instance, validating or invalidating the guy's statement about her being on 49 between one and two. You see what I'm saying? The gaps in time become really important to me because that's how I determine where my gaps in the investigations are and where I should focus my investigation. Uh, I've got guys out there that all I gotta do is call them and say, hey, go check this out. But I have to have something for them to check out before I can call and tell them. Um, Couple things that we're gonna—I want to get into that are going to be, you know, somewhat personal, okay? And it, it does—it's not intended to pry into your personal life. It's intended to pry into what's going on in Crystal's mind, okay? Uh, I'm trying to get a reference for her frame of mind for the past few days before she goes missing, so that I can rule out any possibility of uh, intention to harm self or things of that nature. You understand? Um, and I, I don't know that I can rule that out, but what do you think about it? Do you think that she's, uh, that she has the potential to harm herself? 
I don't I don't know I don't know any of all that crystal is not that kind of person. I don't believe at all. I don't think she I don't feel that way at all. Mm -hmm. So you don't think she had any any suicidal tendencies No, whatsoever. sir. Never tried it in the past? No. Never come close to ODing on drugs in the past? No. When she would go out, did she drink much? She's not a, a whole family drinks, but she drinks a little bit, not any. To the point where somebody has to bring her home and drop her on the front stoop? No, she ain't no drunk. Mm -hmm. Well, you said she goes, sometimes she goes out after and, you go to they, bed. They do drink and they need a driver, but they're not what you're describing is like a sloppy drunk, just somebody got tore down. I mean, right. that's not what, that's that's not an accurate picture of her. Okay. And she likes when I'm having a good time, but I mean, she's, I guess, I don't want to say like a maybe conservative person, but sure. uh, just a normal, typical social drinker. Yeah, a normal, typical yeah. person likes to have a good time. I mean, that, that's it. So if you had to guess, how often would you say she would go out. She doesn't go out real often. Not real often. I mean, she's got all, all those, uh, all her kids, and we got Eli. I mean, we have a pretty busy, busy lifestyle, and we've always seems like we've always got kids here and there. So I mean, right. we don't have a, a whole lot of time to do that. We don't like to get babysitters all the time. You know, sometimes if her parents have a couple of the kids, or Keith might have a couple of, we might go out with. Always, usually, you know, with Eli, we don't usually seldom ever get a babysitter for him, mm -hmm. um, and we take him with us. But other than other than that, um, well, I get. I guess the reason I'm confused about that is because you said it was not unusual for her to go out with the girls. It's not unusual. Yeah, so when I, so help me understand. You mean? But that's what I'm talking about. Once a month, or once every other month, or. I mean, what, how much time are we talking about here? You know, because my wife might have a girl night a couple times a year, but she might not be the typical wife either. Yeah, I don't maybe know. Maybe probably about two times every three months. Okay. Like once every six weeks. I mean, what's, what's weird about it to me here is, you know, everybody says past tense and all that. Oh, he doesn't. See, he doesn't use it at all, which is actually, for me, weird. Because usually when somebody's missing, you don't say, I mean, here's the thing is everybody always thinks when somebody says, well, she was this. Oh, it means they know that they're dead. It doesn't mean right. shit, really. But in this case, he only, it's all, and that, and his brother probably told him. Because I, I, I if, if he isn't involved, the world will end tomorrow. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I agree. Right? So the thing <laughs> is, is he's saying, she is this, she is that. And then you wonder, because his brother made sure that every time you're talking about her, make sure that's why there's like pauses so he can make sure that mm -hmm. I don't think he's a stupid guy, yeah. you know? I feel like he, he knew what he was gonna do. He planned it. You know, he kept her out there that night feeding the cows. I think he knew exactly what was gonna happen and he's prepared himself to be interrogated. I mean, look at him. His legs crossed, he's, you know, hanging out, he's just holding on to the pen. It's like, this is no big deal. Yeah. I mean, she's missing. You didn't report her to the police. Well, I don't think you he's don't a know what I don't you've done for days. I don't think he's a genius either, but I just think he's... And I don't think he's stupid, though. Yeah, he might not um, be. <laughs> I mean, you know, how much land does this guy own? That doesn't, you know, just because you have the money to buy real it. estate. I mean, a lot of the stuff he did was, like, through, like you know negative i mean i'm sure his family had money too i don't know I, I don't know what he did using his own ingenuity and you know great business sense that he ended up buying because a lot of the stuff he had was from like theft wasn't it i mean wasn't there a whole bunch of things that he did where um well castle would probably know but there's there's things where he actually got um well, uh, i know he was charged with some uh theft of lumber and you know other things like that but i don't know you know didn't we find out that he owned like some buildings on, on oh. our last show afterwards <laughs> oh, oh yeah it was a building yeah what was the building again it was the uh, a cps building yeah yeah he actually owned 
the land, I mean, the actual building, the CPS building, and mm-hmm. then they weren't sure that they could really help because of that or something. It was sort of weird. Yeah, it was like a weird conflict or something. I don't know. I mean, the guy apparently is well known around this county. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, you, so you said Eli generally does not go to a babysitter. No, he doesn't. I don't want him at a baby, and I certainly don't want him at somebody's house that smokes. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't. I don't want. To. I'd rather just keep him right with me, and I'd rather, um, if we're going out doing something, I'd rather just take him right along. Mm-hmm. You know, right along with. Well, us. so that kind of brings me to one of my questions that I had. When we talked a little bit about the last time that we talked. Well, where we was he when you were and disposing of Crystal? Um, you know, and, and I get the fact that That'd she cool would tell see what the kids, say. you know, hey, we got a babysitter for the night or for the evening. We're going to go out, mm-hmm. you know. I get that. You explained that, that the other kids kind of get jealous. If, and if you guys yes, we, don't, we don't want to hurt their feelings. Sure, sure. Especially Kylie, the situation. She's always wanted to. A fa- I mean, any kid who wants a father figure in her life, she's really struggled in that area, and her mother doesn't want her to think that she's pushing one of the children out and then the other one can go with us. I mean, that's normal. I mean, in my opinion, sure. it is. And, and, I, and I get why she might tell Keith that, because Keith has two kids. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want him to tell them differently than what she's told them. Um, are you familiar with a woman named Christina Holly? I know, yes, I know who you're talking okay. about. Uh, there are some text messages between her and Crystal on Friday, and she's asking Crystal if they want, if if she wants to go to um, Chuck E. Cheese. I think it was uh, something something to do with the kids, do right. something with the kids. Um, and she tells her the same thing. Well, I've got a, we've got a sitter for the evening. Uh, it's our first time being kid free for a while, so we don't want to. You know, uh, we're we're kid free. We're gonna enjoy ourselves. Right. Why would she lie to her about that? Aha. I don't know. I can't answer that question. Uh, her and how ha- and uh, what you got the aha? Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. So the, yeah. this was their date night. Mm-hmm. So they were supposed to be going out. Her friend and her are texting back and forth about going to Chuck E. Cheese with the kids. She's telling her girlfriend, "No, we're kid free." That is a term my sister uses often. She has three kids, and if she gets rid of her children and is able to put them with a babysitter, she is excited. You know, and that's exactly what she uses. I'm kid free. She doesn't mean two of my kids aren't here and one of my kids is here, and our date night is mm. going to feed cows in the rain. Right, but then how come there isn't anybody out there that knows where Eli was? What do you I'm, mean? I Eli mean, was with them. I know, but she said she was kid free. So, exactly. So That's what he's asking. He's like, why would she lie? You're supposed to have had a sitter for Eli as well. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Why, so, why was Eli with you? So maybe there was, she, maybe Brooks told her, oh, I've got a sitter. We're going to be kid free. And then she texts her and we're friend. going on a date. Yeah, we're going on a date. But that never happened. And he had, okay. Hmm. There yeah, you go. that's what I'm thinking. Christina, close. Yeah, I mean, they've always been good friends. I know exactly who you're talking about. Do they, I mean, the, close enough that they see each other on a regular basis every few days? or No, talk on say the phone they, or? they talk on the phone, but I don't know if they see each other that uh, that often. Uh-huh. But, uh, See when people type in the chat, Eli was with them. I don't, you know, I don't think Chris. I don't know. Was is Crystal known to be alive after leaving that house that night? Who? Crystal was she seen? I can't remember if she was seen somewhere after leaving that house. See when, so no. when people say Eli was with them, um, we don't know like them when. I mean, because there was no never. I don't think there was a them after. That night after yeah. midnight. Yeah, yeah, or like I don't so, think they were seen somewhere, you know. Well, that yeah, and that's a whole thing too, right? Castlin says, I I believe Eli was with his mother, but there's no proof of that. Um, yeah. Because do you think that Crystal's like dragging him around by the arm out there, running around in, in, in the nighttime feeding cows? That, no, it doesn't no. sound right to me. Maybe he would just run into the house and go play with his grandmother. That would make more sense, I would think so. But what evidence is there at all that Crystal even left the house that they live at and was moving around at midnight somewhere? Well, later we're going to get to the part where him and his brother are seen on the cameras entering back into that farm or leaving or whatever. 
So they must have some type of video evidence from the cameras there that he pulled in there that night with Crystal. But but, but how do they know with Crystal? Okay. I mean, well, yeah, you don't know for sure, do you? I see what you're saying. You yeah, don't know cause, for Because Crystal sure. could have been even killed at the house way earlier in the evening. You know, like, and then, because, I mean, how do we know that she made it out to the farm alive and thinking they were on date night? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that is a really good point, but I would think if I was going to try to dispose of a body yeah, you and made not want to get caught with forensics, I'm not going to do it at our house. Yeah. I'm going to wait and do it when we get way out into the woods somewhere and... You know. Yeah, so maybe she got into the, the car, even with Eli, but then wouldn't that have been weird to her? Like, hey, I thought we had a babysitter or something. I don't know. It's just a lot of well, stuff. to. Castlin yeah. brought up a good point that I knew already. One of the daughters was still at the house. Remember, we talked about this. Oh, that's One right. of the daughters was waiting. So she did see them leave together. So we know she was, you know, there at a certain time. Oh, that's right. And they all remember. left together. Yeah. I remember that. That was on. Last and then week. she never. I don't think she ever left that farm. I think last week we brought that part up with the daughter. Yep. Yeah. So the. Um, so they go there, and they were gonna. It was gonna be. Maybe they were supposed to go to the farm and drop off Eli, then do date night. But that was not really the plan. I think that's probably what makes more sense now. Yeah, and, and then because I think he was very protective of Eli, so maybe he only wanted his mother babysitting or something. And his mom. The way gonna, he talks is crazy he doesn't want him with anybody and then he tells his mother don't uh don't she's gonna obviously protect him so Absolutely. she's just gonna say no i didn't babysit her sure you know and that's because the thing is, is as soon as you say that if she admits that she was the babysitter it really starts implicating brooks even more because then mm -hmm. you know but so that's why he's just i don't know why she'd lie i don't know why she'd lie you know right <laughs> And, she, and saying not. that they have the baby, you know, this guy who's portraying himself as this great dad, good stepdad, is he going to bring his baby with him and kill the mother? So unlikely. But it's probably very likely that Eli was in his car seat with a little bit of music on and he took her out there or the mother had him in the house. Yeah, I think that's, she, I, I think don't think she ever made more. it off that farm. I think he'd already had a conversation with his mother and said, I'm going to take her out. She's going to take us all down. Because they do shady shit. And Crystal probably knew that because they were together and she was going to not be with him anymore. He couldn't control her. So then he takes her out there. His mom knew that he was going to take her out. Then took care of, uh, took control of Eli. Maybe even Crystal at this time thought that this was part of date night. You yeah. know, and right after that, something happens to her. Doesn't that kind of make Just sense? Just an FYI, we're under an ice storm at the moment, and oh. my closet <laughs> light keeps flickering. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can continue playing it just like last time, right? <laughs> well, just, I'm just going to go shut that light off because oh, yeah. it's freaking me out anyway. It's like a ghost. Right. So go ahead. <laughs> I think we were also supposed to maybe go to the zoo or something, too. She was gonna take, she's got a little girl that's really close to this hey, matter for the same girl. month, a uh, month apart. Uh, as Eli. Yeah, as Eli. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just curious to me. You know, these are the things that make me wonder. And, and in any other situation, they might not amount to nothing. But Did you ever talk to the girl, the Amanda? Mm -hmm. All right. So and she says there's, there was no plans for her to babysit. All right. Um, so, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Crystal hadn't planned for someone else to watch him. I don't know that. I mean, you know that because you and Crystal have him together. Uh, but I don't know that because I don't know you guys. You know, I don't know, so maybe sometimes, sometimes uh, she might use crystals. So I don't know. If she, I don't know. I can't answer that. Right. I do not know the answer. Okay. But as far as you know, you all did not have plans for a babysitter that night. No, absolutely no. The plan was all along for you guys mm -hmm. to go to the farm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. See, now it gets all makes sense. Yes, you did have plans for a babysitter, but it was your mom. And she's part of the cover-up. I mean, this isn't conspiratorial. This is all only thing that makes sense right here. She's mm -hmm. part of the cover-up, and therefore um, the mother was used to hold Eli while he did something to Crystal. That's the only thing that makes because, sense. And think about that, too. Let's just think, when, not in a conspiracy manner. You get there at 7 o'clock. 
you bring Eli in, you tell Krista, I'm, I'm just going to drop him off in there. And when you get back to the car, oh, my mom needs me to feed the, uh, the cows. Then the weird trip that he says, and they must know this on video, that he drives away and realizes tractor supply is not open. So he comes back and then they spend five hours there feeding 12 cows. That is crap. <laughs> that did not yeah. happen. <laughs> no way. And I'd like to know exactly when Nick shows up with him because then you know something's going on. You know, isn't it the same night, like later in the evening? The night that they do that is going to be... The next night? The next night, I believe. Yeah, we're going to get to that part. Yeah. Anyway, That happens <laughs> soon, but yeah. We'll just, we'll just, <laughs> There's so much in this case. Yeah. Like this is where, this part here is where it sort of gets more interesting. Not the... Oh, yeah. Like uh, the other crazy crap from at the beginning where he's just... You know, I you know, I don't know what it, it, I think he's just being really deceptive and trying to mucky mu, you know muck up the waters when he talks. You know. mm -hmm. <laughs> wow! So he's making him wait this time. <laughs> Give me just a second. I want to get your phone to look that phone number. All right. Okay, we got that number in. Yeah, go right ahead. Do what you got to do. Looks like you got a couple of messages. Well, I don't care. I don't know how to do that. You, I, I've, you got got do a, I've got an Apple phone. So just I think we'll put the number in, right? Uh, well, or yeah, or check contacts, or however you do it to make to see who it is. Yeah. Check this one out to thirteen ninety. Just call it. Oh, Steve Lawson. Okay, who's who is Steve Lawson? He's uh, somebody that works for me. Aha. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I knew I wasn't crazy, Gray. I'm too detailed to be crazy. About what? Remember I told you on the phone after the last show? I'm like, how the hell did I put in Steve Lawson? Who even is Steve Lawson? Oh, yeah. It's in my presentation that that's who called. And I'm like, I've oh. got to go back and change that because it's wrong. Well, there it is. See? So you're not crazy. It was, okay. I was thinking it was Danny Singleton. And you see it was Steve Lawson. All right. Anyway, back to the show. <laughs> Hey Steve. Yeah. Hey, I can't I can't hear you real good. I'm uh, I'm gonna let you speak up a little bit, okay? Okay, sir. Hey, I was wanting to know, hey, I've got some things going on next week. Uh, I'm gonna yes, need, I'm gonna need your help with me. Are you already booked up or can you help me? I haven't moved up yet. I am still looking for a place, that's why I needed two numbers from you. All right. Well, I can I can write them all down and, and get them there for you. But I was I was actually talking about doing some doing some more work with your with your little skid steer and so forth. Mine still broke well, down. Well, I said uh, get with me tomorrow. I'm coming. I know you have a hard time hearing me because where I'm located at. All right. So uh, just get in touch with me tomorrow. We'll see what we can do. But I, my question. Uh, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry about everything that's going on in your life, brother, and I got you in my prayers. I certainly, I said it is a very difficult and trying time, but I appreciate you uh, you saying that. But hey, I need your help while I got you on the phone here. Do you remember, the other night you called me really, really late, and I, I forgot I forgot what you asked me. Can you, uh, I, well, I guess it wasn't on the phone, I might have been tired, I know it was pretty late at night. Can you remember what you asked me or what you uh, were after? I can't remember. Yes, sir, I can. I called to ask you for them numbers for a house. Oh, for a rental house. Yes, sir. And, I did. and what did I, I forgot? What did I? What did I tell you? You told me that you would call. Uh, what's her name? Katie or whatever she handles all that. Crystal. Crystal. Okay, I apologize. Yeah. And, uh, she said she handles all that, and uh, that you would get back with me on it. All right. Did Crystal handle all that? 
I mean, it's weird. Yes, she did, but here's the he key said to this the little answer. part right there. Yeah. Crystal's sitting beside him, and he tells Steve, oh, I'm going to have to call Crystal and have her get back to you. Well, Crystal's sitting right beside you, so why didn't you just hand her the phone? Because she's the one who handled the rental property information. Yeah. She pretty yeah. probably looked at her phone and just gave the guy the number. And that's date night, right? When yeah, it was around what midnight? midnight? Midnight, yeah. So that means she's not alive at the time. And it was thirteen seconds. The phone call was thirteen seconds. So he's saying, "Oh, I don't remember why you called." And Steve's like, "I needed a rental number, and you said that girl Katie or Crystal handled it, and you'd have her call me. You had to call her, and mm. she would call me. Well, why would she need to call you? Because she's sitting right beside you right now." But is there anybody else? I mean, and what's interesting isn't there? Maybe there's other people. Is there anybody else that might have? Um, would it be the person that he really said? Because it's weird how he fed him the name in this mm -hmm. call right here. Crystal, Crystal, you know. No, Crystal did handle some of uh, the administrative stuff okay. for, that's how she met Brooks. She rented a place from him. That's how they ended up meeting. Mm -hmm. So she was handling some of the stuff. Yeah, so the thing is, it's probably, she's just not alive at the time. Mm-hmm. And 13 seconds, man, that's like just really wanting to get somebody off the phone. Off right? the phone, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, busy. yeah, yeah, she'll call you back, <laughs> you know. Yep. Thank you so much, Neil. All right. If there's anything I can do, you give me a call. Thank you. You have a good night, Neil. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you. So that begs a question in my mind. All right. If she's in the truck next to you when he called, why would you need to call her about getting numbers for rental? Because being that way that night we're headed to the house, you know, I just wouldn't, uh, she normally was not gonna deal with stuff that late. And I mean, I don't even, I, I probably didn't even look at the phone to see who it was calling me. I'm sure I just answered it, you know. But he said you told him that you'd need to call her. All right. Why would you need to call her? I mean, that's an odd phrase for someone who's sitting next to you in the truck. Do you understand? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. But I mean, that's what I, if that right there is what I told him, that right there is what I told him. Um, we wasn't on the phone that uh, that long, but normally I would just uh, she handles all that, and that's what I would do. She's not going to want to mess with that kind of stuff that late. Uh, I'm sure I probably tried to answer the phone really quickly. Um, so that it wouldn't, uh, a lot of times after I get moving, Eli goes to sleep, you know. Um, sometimes he goes to sleep in the truck, sometimes he doesn't, so. He wanted to get her off the, he was like, oh my God, I didn't want any calls during this time. It shows where I am, you know. Yeah, and if he didn't answer it, well, I thought you guys didn't get home till 1220, so now you're not answering your phone, too. Yeah. What were you doing? Where were you? Well, he could easily, so maybe he, he could easily say he just didn't want to answer the phone. It was date night at midnight, you know. That's an easy out. Yeah, but he's a business guy, and he, he earlier said in the conversation, oh, I get phone calls all the time at night, and they're like, people no. would call you at midnight? He's like, yeah. oh, I have the tile guys are calling me at 3 a.m. Yeah, so he sort of boxed himself into having to say he answers the call. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to call him, and you got his number and everything. If you want to call him, you know, you can call him. Wait, who's he want? I missed that part. Hold on. He said, well, you have his number right here. You can just call him. Oh. He knows the cop doesn't believe him. What do you think? I don't, I'm shocked. I do not know. When you told me that she doesn't do drugs. She's not on any kind of drugs that I'm aware of. She drinks socially. Okay, mildly, yes, not any kind Every of... Every six, eight weeks, something like that, right? Has she ever had trouble with depression before? Not really, uh, not to my knowledge. I mean, there's always stress that's your highs and lows in people's life, but I wouldn't classify her as a... Uh, 
Uh, they were like a phone ringing. Do you hear that in the background? That was weird. Hmm. As, a, as a stressful person or someone that's deeply depressed. Hmm. Well, I know Keith Rogers, her right. ex-husband, or still current, but not together. Um, I know that he has had a drug problem in the past. Was she, a, was she with him during the time that he had the drug problem? Or was that after? Yeah, but I thought you guys got uh, that. I mean, I think, I think that he has fought that for some time, and I think that she was obviously definitely in the picture while that was going on, but I don't, I don't, to my knowledge, she didn't get wrapped up into any of that. I guess the, the biggest problem that I have is that most women are not going to walk away from their purse and their cell phone. I don't think it's a conflict of interest at all. He was just running for, he was running for sheriff. His brother being in there, I mean, this is a, you know, <laughs> they, these guys are detectives. They're, you know, they're above the level that his brother was at, so. Um, That's what I would say. In the car. I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if she were going to walk to go find help or something, she would use, She would take her phone, even if it was dead. Uh, she wouldn't, most, my, my wife wouldn't leave her purse anywhere for any reason. Uh, and they don't treat his brother So I can't figure why either, she would so. walk away from the car and leave the purse there. When we took the bloodhounds up there, the lady commented that it was though she wasn't even there. I mean, they had her things that you provided us for sin. Mm -hmm. And they said it was as though she was not even there. I don't, I can't explain that. I don't understand what that means. I don't know why, if it's her car and she leaves in it sometime Friday night, why does it appear to the dogs that she's not even there? I agree with you. This same set of bloodhounds tracked you all, tracked her in the car from 49, and they had never been to your mom's farm before, tracked you all, her scent, all the way down 49, turn yeah. on Balltown Road, That's and crazy. turn on Pasco Ballard, as though they were following your car. So I know the dog is not defective, because right. they're following your her scent, and they don't know where your mom lives, they've never That's been right. there before. So the dog's nose is not defective, so when the dog doesn't even try to find her on the parkway, where her car look, ends up, it's just very odd. She wasn't in the car. I, I can't figure out why they wouldn't find any scent of her at all if she walked one way or another. They would have picked it up. Right. They would have. Been, they would have at least walked far enough for her to have been picked up by somebody. Hey Brooks, why do you think that? A, why do you think there was a flat tire on the car? And you know, I mean, the thing is, is it? I mean, I, I said it last week, but I say I got to say it again. His theory. It was early that she just kind of left, you know, uh, just kind of took off. But uh, and then that's why he's not really that interested in helping or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, is the car had a flat tire and it appears that she was abducted by somebody. And you'd think Brooks would be like, oh, my God, somebody took her. Somebody has her. But it doesn't fit the story that he told. So he sort of they, what's weird is the the um, crime scene setup that they did doesn't match the theory it was almost like mm -hmm. they were they were just kind of like yeah free balling it for you know like you know free you know just oh yeah 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 oh wait this this will work but make it look like the flat tire that's why she pulled over purses in the car somebody just grabbed her and took her but then his story he should have just been telling a story like uh, well we you know we got in a fight that night and she wanted to go on a drive and I think somebody just abducted her that would have exactly. matched but he, but he doesn't say that stuff so. He screws up because you're right. When you were saying this this to me last week, I was like, oh my God, you're right. So if his whole theory <laughs> is that, well, she ran off, I don't know, you know, she just wanted to go. And then he plants her car in the Bluegrass Parkway. He leaves all her stuff in it with a flat tire. That is an opposite theory of what he wants people to believe. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Bigfoot didn't come take her out of that car. And because so of that, he isn't worried in the least bit after knowing her car was found there. Well, where the hell did she go? Did she right. walk away to go find a new boyfriend? No. Yeah. 
And so if he really believed that she just took off, maybe you could see somebody being like, ah, screw it, I'm going to... But the, the evidence at the scene doesn't show that at all. It so, sounds like something really nefarious happened. And right. that that should have made him change, and he didn't. So. And panic and, and think, oh, my God, yeah. you know, why aren't you guys looking? Hurry. No. Yeah. yeah. Now, this, is, this is all interesting because then the bloodhounds didn't even track her scent in that vehicle. Maybe it's... I mean, I know she's been in the vehicle, but I guess your your body would transmit more, way more scent for the dogs to uh, catch, and there were, there was nothing. So that means she wasn't in the car. I think everybody knows that. The, she was never in the car. The car was pulled over. The um, was the air in the tire. Was there a puncture in it, or was it just let out? I, there was another case that I just did that was very similar, actually. I think it was just let out in that one. But uh, in this one, I don't know how the tire's flat, but they just pulled the tire, car over. And, you know, obviously just had her purse in there. You know, they, they used her keys and drove it. They probably slid the seat back. I don't know where the, if the seat was back or forward or whatever. Uh, smart, uh, you know, if somebody smart uh, enough like Nick would tell him, hey, make sure to put that seat back up. I yeah. did have that information. I can tell you that the seat was wrong for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I think Nick is probably a um, tire punctured at mile marker fourteen. So yes. it was punctured. Okay, so it was punctured. So they just drove the car there, put her keys, purse. You know, the keys are in the ignition, the purse and cell phone, and everything, and then they just turned it off. I mean, and they turn off the car, pull it over, and puncture the tire to make it look like she just was abducted. <laughs> but then, I don't know. They just didn't you know get, cross their t's and dot their i's i guess and get the stories matching but i know it's really pretty crazy it's interesting so here we go uh you know you have if you break down on the parkway somebody's not going to pull bumper to bumper with you so you're going to have to walk from your car to their car to get That's in right. so the dog doesn't even act like it wants to go in one direction or another even far enough for her to have even gotten in a car with somebody that's just weird to me. I don't understand. Unless she was never in her car when it got put on the parkway. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't answer that. I do not know. Do you know of anybody <laughs> that would want to hurt her? I mean, as far as I know, she's a well-likable person. Right. Um, I know that she's done a few evictions with some folks, got a few people upset, but... Were they missing evictions? I mean... Like threat. I mean, there's never a good eviction. Right, but I mean, it's no, no, just normal, them. normal, normal business. But I can't think of any. Like, she's a likable person. I can't think of anybody okay, who would them. want to harm her. Ever have um, anybody show up at the house upset over something? Uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You come in yeah. when you're when it's not appropriate for them to be coming to their landlord's house. Ever have them show up at your house beating on the door? Hey, you threw me out. Or I mean, a puncture tire is a better maneuver because there was a case that we just were doing on my my channel about this tire was flat, but it, the air was just let out of it. <laughs> I mean, how stupid, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't happen. And when they filled the tire back up, it didn't deflate. There was no holes or anything. So in this case, they would just puncture. I'm just reading what somebody typed in there. Or whatever. Yeah, I just Probably checked on the seat too. Mm-hmm. The seat was pushed too far back for it to have been her. She wasn't very tall oh, either. Oh, there you go. There so you it go. was way too far back for it to have been her. Hmm. That seems like something that, like if Nick was the one that moved the car, that'd be kind of dumb that he didn't think of that because that's like okay. a classic uh, deal. I saw conviction saying he threw me out, not one time. Uh, now, several of the tenants do come to our house. Some people don't just mail a money order check. Sometimes people stop by there and drop it off. Sure. And, you know, she can write them a receipt that way or whatever. But as far as what you're saying about you evicted me and you threw me out and they're confronting her about it, never happened one time. Does Kylie's dad, excuse me, Kylie's dad, she does, he doesn't have anything to do with her? Very little. I don't even know. I think he lives a far piece from here. I'm not really sure. So he, somebody, I thought they said their dad's name was John Fenwick. Is that correct? Or no, not? that's not right. That's not right. Okay. I think it's Jesse. John Fenwick is one of the owners of Bluegrass Seed. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. that's not her. Okay. That's not so her. So Jesse Fenwick. I believe. And that might not Somebody that they can live around your club. Yeah. It's a far picture. Is it now, but obviously uh, his mom does, lives on Stone Road. Yes. So he's a member of that Fenwick family that's from around here. I don't know how many sets of Fenwicks there are, but I know there's... there's as far as I know, there's only two. Now, right. I don't know which one he would belong to, and right. there may be more than that that I'm unaware of. But, right. um, so, is, do you know, is she related to the Fenwicks that own the Bluegrass Seed? I, do do not, I don't think she is, but I do not don't know. For sure. I don't I know the family trees sure. and all, I don't do all right. that. Um, I did, well, I didn't know since you, you know, do business, uh, if you've done business with them, if it'd come up. But, um, and then... Ashley is the daughter that her mom and dad raised. Yes, and her last, I figured out her last name is Johnson. I couldn't tell you that the other night because I was so darn stressed out, but her last name is Johnson, and I do not know her dad's first name. I just know that he, he stays incarcerated quite a bit. He'll get out from time to time, but he will only make it about a week and may find a reason to lock him back up again, whether it be drugs or whatever it uh, is. Have you all ever had any trouble out of him? I've never met the man. Um, I know that that was a pretty abusive relationship from what Crystal's told me, but um, I don't really know. I can't speak intelligently upon it. It's been quite some time back, so I really don't, I don't know a whole lot about it. I don't even know the guy's first name. They could have used a little bit better interrogator here, I think. Now, somebody that was really just putting him on his no custody, heels. No custody know. issues with Keith? I know that, um, I know that Tori uh, has told her before that um, she gets mad if uh, Tori gets mad if she's been corrected or something like that right there. <laughs> She'll say, well, I'm going to my dad's house or I'm going over here. You know, they'll want to Flip flop back or forth or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, split house. Play down. one off the other. Yeah, I know Tori does that, but I mean, I don't think they've ever really had any big issue on getting the kids. From what I can understand, that's been pretty good. I mean, if one right. of them wants them or to, uh, Keith wants them for a little bit or that kids want to go over there, they just had kind of like a, a mutual agreement where that's what they did that's just what they did i never really yeah. struggled with it you know yeah well okay so i guess where i go from here um we we're, we're still getting video from different places you know that along, along that route uh, can i get this sure please yes. no, here, we go. Go. here we go no. I, I'm up, I'm up here. I know that you didn't know. I'm up here in this interview with um, the detective, Detective Snow. I've been up here a good little while. I'm, I'm filling out this uh, this statement here and everything. Do, is it? Do, are you telling me that's very? Let me just see what happens if I make that louder. Um, it's going to be really loud, the other stuff, but I just want to see. Do, is it, do you, are you telling me that's, are you telling me that's what I need to do? I know, I, I know. Man, you can almost make it out. I know, I, I'm not, I know that. But the way that I look at it is I, I'm innocent. I ain't done nothing wrong. Well, you know, I know you've told me innocent people have got jammed up, but if you're telling me to leave, I'll get up and leave. If you want me, if you want I'll, me to. I'll try to do something with that later. I know I'm going through a lot, but I'm trying to get this guy to help me. I don't think she, I don't think she's ran off with some other guy. I don't, I don't believe that. You can't make me think that. No. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, so, so do I. 
I'll do exactly what you're telling me to do right now. You want me to get up and leave? Man, I don't think these guys, I don't think, I don't think these people who got a vindictive just to, to skin me for no reason. Man, this is not their family. This do you think this call is a setup call, like an intentionally done? Like it's literally, even his brother Absolutely. knew. Absolutely. Like it, yeah, like it's just him. I mean, the, the conversation ends, but it seems like it was almost said. I mean, I'm surprised he didn't put it on speakerphone. You know? like, Completely 100% staged. Yeah, that's what it seems. 100% like. stage. Yeah. She didn't leave with no other man, and you can't make me believe it, and nobody can. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It yeah. sounds like he knew that somebody could overhear it or something. I, of I course, know. you know that the cop is saying, "Oh, she took off with another man." The cop brother, you know, that's what she did. So now this cop is hearing that from the other cop on the phone. Come on, it's yeah. staged. It isn't very good either. I know yeah. he, sh he should have put it on speakerphone. Although that yeah. wouldn't have seemed natural. He just has it all the way up to uh, the volume and on the speakers. Mm -hmm. it's not He thinks y'all are going to fuck is what he thinks. I don't know who he is. Nick, my brother. Okay. He you just, know, no, I, I know that, but I, I'm not. He just said just to, just to keep sitting up here to give, give a statement, do an interview, whatever I got to do, do it. But he said, no, I'm just to keep just letting them just beat you to death over this right here. Just ask what you got to ask and let me you know. I, and you tell me. You see what I'm, you see what I mean? He knows more about this than I do. You see. And have I, listen, have I told you? that I'm for you? Yes, you have. I said, what did I say? My job is to find Crystal, right? That's right. However <laughs> that happens, my in, in the manual of interrogations, he's going through the list of things that they try to tell you to do. To <laughs> it's like, come on. My job is to find her, whether Sorry. I find her, hopefully alive and well, and safe somewhere, or not. My job is to find her. If I don't find her alive and well, my job is to prosecute the person that did something. That's before. right. If that turns out to be you, my job is to prosecute you. If that turns out to be someone else, my job is to prosecute them, to gather yes. evidence for a lawyer, a prosecutor, to prosecute them. I don't know whether that person will be you or not. Well, did I not tell you when you come in here and sit down today that right now you're the main person of interest? Yes, that's right. And I explained to you the reason that you're the main person of interest, right? You're the last person to see your life, right? There's, and I went through your timeline with you and explained to you that there's gaps in your timeline, right? Be it good, bad, or indifferent, you can't remember some things about Saturday, you can't remember some things about Sunday. That's not a judgment against you, that's just a fact. I am simply a fact finder. If you want to go, you may go at any time you wish to. I never would never dream of stopping you, didn't tell you you had to stay. If you want to bring a lawyer in and answer questions with a lawyer, you're welcome to do that. I'd have been asking you the very same questions in front of your lawyer that I asked you today. Right? I have not given up hope of finding her alive. That being said, you know as well as I do, the longer this draws out, the less likely we are to find her alive unless she's run off somewhere. I mean, that's just a fact. That's right. That's just the facts as they are. I am not for you. I am not against you. I am not for her family or against her family. Right now, my job is to work for Crystal. Plain and simple. It's just that simple. If that means that I have to interrogate you, then that's what I have to do. You've been nothing but cooperative with me. I appreciate that. We've talked. This makes number three? Third time? I don't know. I can't. Three times. Sense. Here, the first time. At your house, the second time. Yeah, you know exactly. And here, the third time again. Not counting the polygraph, because I didn't ask you any questions mm -hmm. then. You've not asked for a lawyer. You're right. That's your right to do. You're entitled to do that. If Nick thinks you should go and you want to take his advice, go ahead. It's fine. I'm not offended by that. My job is not to make you happy. My job is to find Crystal. If that makes you happy, awesome. You know, um, but make, make no mistake. My job is to find her. That's what I'm doing. If I offend people in the midst of that, well, I'll apologize later for offending people. If it finds her home safe, then I'll just take the blunt of offending people and go on. You know, just like what you said. What'd you say? Doesn't matter what they think of you as long as we find her. That's all right. So that being said, you know, you're free to take Nick's advice if he wants you to leave. 
I'm, I don't really have any more questions with you. I was just going to tell you what we going where we go next. All right. Yeah. We're wrapping up the attempt. What we're doing next, and if it's over, it's maybe it's yeah. the longer. So yeah. So uh, you know, here's what I'm looking at. Right. I'm, I'm trying to find video of her car getting on the parkway, whether it's uh, New Eden Road or uh, 150. I'm trying to find some video of her car getting on the parkway in hopes that it will reveal to us when it gets on the parkway because there's some confusion about that. Some people calling in saying they saw it on Saturday. Some people calling in saying they saw it on Sunday morning. Some people calling in saying it wasn't there Saturday or Sunday morning. That's just the nature of the beast. When you put information out there, you get a lot of it back. So I'm trying to figure out when it got on the parkway, and if I can, who was driving it when it got on the parkway. Maybe she was driving it, maybe she wasn't. Maybe somebody else was driving it. I don't know. You know, maybe somebody stole it and it got a flat tire and they left it on the parkway. I have no idea. There's a million possibilities about how it got on there. So I'm trying to figure that out. I would like to fill in the gaps in your timeline. I may be able to do that with the video at your aunt and uncle's house because they may be able to show me when you came and went from the farm on Saturday, those kind of things. I'm probably going to interview your mom. I'm probably going to interview Nick and ask them, you know, if they were with you any time during that time. Maybe they have a little better memory of it. They can fill in those gaps. I'm probably going to interview the employees that called you Friday and Saturday, right. or Friday evening and then Saturday, to interview them and ask them, you know, when you called him, what did you talk about? How long did you talk, uh, Mr. Uh, Stanley or whatever his name mm -hmm. is? You know, did he answer the phone? Did you all talk on Saturday morning? If you did, what did you talk about? Did you go see him? Those kinds of things to help me fill in your timeline, which gives me a better idea of whether or not you're involved in her disappearance. And it's, that's good. what I do. So, and then once I've done as much as I feel like I can do, I'm going to move on to other things. I'll be honest. Beyond that, short of finding her somewhere, I've done about all the forensic countermeasures I can do. You know, we've, we've gone through the car with a fine tooth comb. We fingerprinted the car. We've gone through her purse. We're going to start going through bank records. You know, she did have an account. I know you told me you didn't know that she did or didn't. She did have an account of some sort. Um, my understanding is maybe from a family member that there was some... Uh, uh, Social Security disability from Keith for the kids that maybe went into that account. Maybe yeah. that's the case. We'll kind of look into that. You know, we'll start questioning people about the validity of those kinds of things, about the apartment and those kind of things, and try to get a better idea if that's just a shady rumor or whatever. You know, but I've got to. Unfortunately, I've got to dispel all of these rumors. You know, that's part of my job. Mm -hmm. We've got to either prove them, disprove them, or the no, we can't do either. Farm. So that's where I'm at. All right. So. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. If if I ask you to come in again or if I come see you, again, know that you're always welcome to tell me you don't want to talk to me anymore. That's perfectly okay. All right? All right. Um, are you completely on my phone? Yes, sir. Okay, so one of the things that he says to him is, I'm going to look at the video from your aunt and uncle to see what time you got to the farm and what time you left. Maybe they live sort of that's, near there or something. Well, that's what I was asking Castlin, and she says, his mother owns hundreds of acres. Her brother does also. The land connects oh. among a few family members, well, so you maybe, go. you know, the ones who own the cameras are the aunt and uncle or whatever it is. Yeah. But there's definitely cameras there, so I'm shocked that they haven't looked at those <clears throat> cameras yet at the point of this interview. Yeah. I'm pretty uh, surprised, but as I, uh, well, I was saying earlier, is I think they could have got a better interrogator. He he I agree. he could have put him on his heels many times, and he just kind of I don't know. Was yeah, he's very relaxed, a very relaxed guy. He yeah. was not aggressive enough at all. <laughs> and aren't you supposed to like put them in the corner away from the door so they you know isn't that a tactic? So they feel like they're trapped or something. I don't know. I read that before. Yeah, maybe the back. It's a big corner. farm. They sanctuary. I see. Okay. Well. Hmm. All right. So. Yep. Go back. Hop to onto the slides real quick. <clears throat> so that was the interview that he did. And then. That night, after this interrogation, the two brothers are seen around 9 p.m going to the family farm and Nick was in the police cruiser. 
So the two brothers, after this interview is done, they go meet up together and they drive one by one into the same place that Brooks and Crystal allegedly were when Crystal went missing. Hmm. It's like, man, we better do something now. They're on to us. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, Brooks goes on to Nancy Grace and he's, you know, I am 100% innocent. So, you know, he's talking to the media and. I wonder if that, is that out there to play somewhere? That'd be kind of interesting. Oh yeah, that's out there to play. I just didn't know how friendly Nancy Grace is. Oh, I'm with not us. friendly with her at all. So. No, no, <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> that's why I didn't put it in. So Brooks takes a polygraph on the 9th. He takes a lie detector test. The results were inconclusive. And then uh, very soon after that, Nick Houck, the officer, the brother, testified in front of a grand jury, leading investigators to suspect his involvement in the case. His police cruiser is confiscated and searched. The lead detective in the missing persons case calls Houck and asks him to come in for an interview for which he refuses it and says, I have nothing to tell you. So now he's like obstructing justice, this guy. <laughs> uh, Crystal's sister also speaks. How did we um, go to that one? I was just getting to that one, yep. And she says, you know, the stories are not adding up. You don't just go to bed one night and not know that she's gone and then not worry when she leaves the baby there and he never offered to search for her, never offered to help the family, nothing. So when we get a little deeper into this, I do have a lot of photos of the family out there and they are everywhere searching for her. Never once does Brooks or Nick, and Nick is a police officer, you would assume you know, that he has some training here and he would want to participate in this situation, but he doesn't. And, you know, the family is quickly starting to get fed up with their behavior. Is there another slide? Uh, click it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, there you go. There we go. So this is the part that we're at now. Nick, the cop, is interrogated by the Kentucky State Police. He agrees to take a polygraph test, but not that day. You know, he doesn't want to take it on that day. He agrees, all right, I'll come back on uh, July 20th. So July 20th comes and the FBI calls Nick to find out when he's going to be there for the test. He says, well, I'm off duty, so I'm not coming in today. Mm. <laughs> so on the 24th, he's on duty again and he's requested to test then. And he does. And the, the examiner, the lie detector test examiner, calls the chief of the police force that he's on to express his concerns about the results of Nick's test and that's all nope okay. and that's all coming up on the video Gray's about to show you there alright that's um, weird how quickly that grand jury got in there I mean that what was the 4th the 5th 6th then it was the ninth, right well I think the reason was because of whatever we couldn't hear on that phone call right there <laughs> yeah. I think that officer heard it and was very concerned that Nick was trying to obstruct an investigation. I'm gonna zoom in on this. Put it to the and there's there. Nick. And if you thought that Brooks annoyed you, <laughs> you don't even know what you're in for. Yeah, I think Nick's uh, may, way more cunning than, than Brooks is though. I mean, he, oh I, he actually, I think, um, I mean, me and Chase probably disagree. Chasing disagree on this one was the uh, the when the on the next part we won't even be on this show. But there's a lie detector guy, and he just I like the guy. I think he, like, I think he I don't made like this guy. I think he made him look like a just <laughs> just didn't give him a in an inch. <laughs> and that guy was just he was trying all the old tricks, you know, the ones they teach you, and he, none of them worked. He was, was trying that. It was actually kind yeah. of funny at one point. I mean, I actually found myself laughing, even though I don't. I, lo <laughs> I loathe this guy. It was just funny how ludicrous it was. So yeah, yeah, he. I don't know, and because he's a police officer, you know, I expect more from him than Brooks. 
But, I, you know, you expect more from Brooks because they have a child together. But you would hope, you know, even though we know the reality of life, you'd hope this is a police officer and, you know, he's going to uphold the law, whatever it may be, and be honest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, do you hear him? So here we go. Here we go. Yeah, Paulette Leonard. You remember that, right? <laughs> That's pretty crazy. So I got to keep in mind, he's a police officer. I'm not sure if he's still, I think he's still one right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's still a cop here. Yep. I thought you got rid of that. Did you delete it? Don't where he's just sitting there quiet? No, that was the, uh, well, I deleted 10 minutes of it. I can move it again. Oh my Lord, there was that much of it. Quiet. He just that was the beginning. Just, that was the beginning. John Wallen. Hello. That's right. The ten minutes. The ten minutes was at the very in the middle. Fine. How are you? See if we can find some. You know what that chair is? This chair. Kind of the chair here. Won't be fine. That's not fine. Let's just kind of start from the beginning. You don't know us, or I, I don't know you. You don't know me. So, uh, let me get your full name. Nicholas Hauk. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> What's your current address? 99 on Olympia Drive. Is so it here in Bardstown? It is. 40004, right? Mm hmm. Okay. What's your uh, cell phone number? 502. 507 48 70 and who's your service through AT&T yeah AT&T okay. any other cell phone or bluegrass it's one or the other AT&T or bluegrass I just changed it about uh, maybe a month ago okay. okay what's your date of birth 12 18 well they got the state police in there because they didn't want to have any sort of conflict of interest of like co you know any co-workers of his but um, you know the other guy he just seemed I don't know <laughs> that last interrogator sucked I, I I don't mean to be mean to him but he was he wasn't very good he, he he was on the right track a few times but he needed to keep going and keep going not didn't do that <coughs> you reside there at 99 Olympia Drive with anybody else? My girlfriend. Okay. Who's, what's her name? Amber Bowman. Do you know her date of birth right off? She's born in 84. It's uh, April the 11th. Okay. All right. How long do y'all live there? We've only been there for uh, two or three weeks. Okay. And we just, I don't know if it matters, we just moved from 104 Glenview Drive to okay. Bartstown. 104 Glenview, what did you say? Glenview. Glenview, all right. Okay. Um, I guess it's just kind of kind of start from the beginning. Um, you know what you're here to talk to, to us about, right? Sure. Okay, What what is that? Yeah. Crystal Rogers. Okay. How do you know Crystal Rogers? She's uh, my brother's uh, girlfriend. Okay. And, and how long have have you known her? How long have they been? I'm assuming. Did you know her before they started dating? No, I didn't. 
So when when did how long have they been dating? Uh, I'm two or three years maybe. So two or three years. Mm-hmm. They have a child together. That that right? Yes. Okay. What's his name? Eli. How old Eli? Uh, about two and a half. Okay, and do, do they reside together or they... Yeah, they reside together. Okay. What's their address? One, uh, 113 or 116 Linview. So y'all live pretty close when you were at the old house. Mm -hmm. And your brother's name is Brooks, is that right? Yeah, Brooks House. That house... <clears throat> That was the house he lived at during this interrogation. How much interaction did you have with, with Crystal over the years? Almost nine. Okay. I mean, did you all... How, how often would you see... Hey, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the like button, all right? Uh, We'll just pause it really quick till we get over 200. We're only at 100 and uh, whatever the hell that is. You know? If you're not going to become a channel member, at least hit the uh, like button. All right? But what we'd like to have is channel members because at some point, maybe we'll just do a channel members only chat. And that way, you know that there's only people chatting that are the supportive people, not, not trolls that show up randomly. All right? So if you'd like to become a channel member, awesome, but hit the like button. We're only at 174. If we don't get to 200, game over. All right? Sorry for the, the pressure tactic, but uh, that's what that's the only thing that's going to work. 180, 182. Pretty easy to hit that button. Pretty easy. One eighty eight. Yeah, it's just frozen there. We got two fifty. Hey, thanks, your gypsy. There we go. Uh, 198. Oh, there we go. 202. All right. Excellent. And welcome, your gypsy. And uh, everyone else, if you'd like to become a channel member, it'd be awesome. And uh, we'll get back to the interrogation now. <laughs> your brother and her or just her but we need yeah we need an extra subscription because it was 9666 at the end oh and by the way uh, my license plate on my car when I got it actually has those three digits does that mean that I'm actually the devil doing a show wow that is crazy I mean, I'll pass her on the street, and that's about <laughs> it, you know. I mean, my brother's got a bunch of rental properties and stuff, and I mean, I just don't see him. I, I see him on the road, and that's about it, you know. Okay. He's so busy, we just, we, we don't hang out much anymore. Okay. And do y'all go to family functions together around Christmas and Thanksgiving? Welcome, Mulfi and Delva Johnson, and thank you very much, QWERTY, which are the letters on the keyboard in a row. <laughs> it, it, you know, if we've got time, we do. You know, I mean, I've got about a dozen rental properties work full-time with the PD and obviously got a family and sure you know I mean we're just busy guys sure I understand that completely we, I think we can we can sympathize with that uh, definitely uh, so in, in the two to three years they've been dating how many times have you been around Crystal I've been down there to this house I don't know maybe I don't know maybe half a dozen times or so okay. could be more could be less I mean we're, we're not trying to, to yeah. put you into a specific number yeah I know what you mean sure um, Thanks, Judy or Judy. What do you know about them? Their kind of their relationship. What do you know about their relationship? I mean, they didn't really argue or anything in front of me. If that's what you're getting at. I don't. I mean, they usually they seem pretty happy to me. So. I mean, we we all have you know we've got I've got a brother and uh, if he's something's going on he'll call me. Thank bitch. you, you know, He'll call. Well, the, hey, you yeah. won't believe what this crazy woman did, or you won't believe this, or you won't believe that. I mean, did he ever give, give you anything like that? No, nah, well, he didn't complain to me. Okay. So how often would you see your brother? I know you said you'd pass him on the street, and that's about it. But how, I mean, how many times a year would you, would you see your brother? You know, if I need a tool or something like that to borrow from him, I may see him. But, uh, 
I mean, I can really put a number on okay. it. You know, I mean, I, I've been, you know, I've got, I've had the rental properties now for four or five years. I've got most of the tools I need, but every once mm -hmm. in a while, he does have something, you know, that I need or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So do you have a, do you have a separate company established for your rental yeah. company? Okay. Yes. I know, and I know he's got a rental company property. Is that correct? So is it are two completely separate yeah, entities? You don't, you don't do business with family. Uh, trust me, I understand that too. Um, what's the name of your business? It was House Properties, but it's, it no longer exists. I dissolved it. Okay. In 2014. Okay. So it's just kind of doing it on your own. Yeah, I just decided I didn't need the LLC. I mean, just extra money for nothing. The way I saw it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I. I'm not expecting to get sued or anything, so. Sure. And your brother, what's what's the name of his business? Hal Reynolds. Okay. How many rental properties do you think he's got? I'm gonna guess between 80 and 100. <laughs> and he builds full time also. Okay, I'm gonna go get a Diet Coke, so you're taking over now. So is he a framer or is he a... He's in everything. Everything. So he's, he's your all-purpose all man then? He is. What's, I mean, what's, what, does he do something more than, a, I mean, does he do one thing more than another? Like, does he frame more than, than anything else? Does he roof more than anything else? I mean, he's just in all of it. I mean, he jumps right there and helps whoever's out there. I mean, obviously he has, uh, you know, certain guys come in to do like the plumbing and electric stuff like sure. that. They're licensed. Sure. But I mean, he's, he's in there getting his hands dirty. Okay, okay. So is he building for himself for the rental company, or is he building? No, he, usually he uh, sells the houses that he builds. Okay, so he's a, a what do they call that, a uh, slumlord? Well, no, I'm not a slumlord, that. but uh, there's a, uh, you build a spec house. Yeah, spec house. No, uh, he's building houses $150,000 and up now. Okay. Custom homes. So you see, you, you, you see, it, it may be one, you know, just a handful of times a year. It could be more than that. It just depends on what, yeah. what your situation is. Okay. And, and did you, in, in the times that you did see Crystal, I mean, did did you ever have any conversation with her? Or? No, I mean, I really, I didn't. I never had any issues with Crystal, but I wasn't around her that much. I mean, she seemed like a pretty easygoing person to me. Okay. Um, do you know any of her family? No, I don't. What about what about your nephew? Do you spend time with him, or I wish I could say yes. I mean, I, no, I don't really see him much. Okay. Well, now didn't yeah. didn't your brother run for sheriff? I guess he, last he, election. He, he, how how did he have time to run a campaign? I don't or? have any idea what he. Wow. Thanks, uh, Vet Girl R W B. <laughs> Thank you. You're awesome, Vet Girl. Thank you. you. I just. <laughs> I guess he thought he was really good at building. He had a lot of success there, and he thought he'd transition into the law enforcement. Okay. But uh, I told him don't do it. Yeah. So, I mean, how what? How did that turn out? Not good. Yeah. Well, uh, politics is, you know, police is one thing; politics is another. Exactly. So, um, I mean, did, did why did he decide to run for for sheriff? Did he? Did he ever say? Did he never say it? I guess he thought he could. I, I don't know if he planned on uh, continue building and then uh, also be chair. I don't know what he was thinking. But okay. I tried to talk some sense into him, and I guess it went in one ear and out the other one. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Who would have won chair if you think he'd made you his chief deputy? I wouldn't work for him. You wouldn't work for him? Well, I mean, I'm happy with the PD. No, no reason to leave. Fair. How long have you been to PD? <laughs> I was, I was, it was living prophetic. for about there a year was a and a half. I think I've been here for about uh, eight and a half, nine, something like that. Okay. Okay. What year did you come on in London? 2005. Okay. Now, you said you were living for a year and a half? Mm hmm. What made you come here to Barstow? This is just where I was from. More money, better yeah. benefits. I mean, I, I started out at seven eighty an hour and then went to. Fifteen dollars an hour, whatever it was, when I started here. So yeah, it's quite a that's a double long. Yeah, it's double. double your salary. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
any trouble since you've been to PD with anybody? Everybody get along pretty good? For the, for, the, for the most part. I mean, obviously a bunch of officers with type A personalities. I mean, uh -huh. you're going to have a few conflicts. But. Sure. You, you never had any conflict with anybody specifically or anything like that? Uh, what shift are you working right now? First shift. How long have you been on that shift? Uh, just changed that not too long. We went to 12-hour shifts. It's probably been in the neighborhood four to six months, maybe. What were you on before that? I was working uh, four to two o'clock in the morning. Who are the guys that you worked with on that shift? Uh, who were the guys on that shift? Uh, it was me, Jason Ellis was on that Boom. shift. There you go. That's crazy, uh, right? <laughs> oh, God. Third. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, as soon as, he, pause, pause. as soon as he was saying the time, I wait, wait, that's Ellis's shift, and then boom, there's his name. I forgot that part, actually, that was in there. See that? And we wondered, too. We were like, was Jason on his shift? Did they ever see each other? So Jason was on his shift. Yeah, well, let's play that that is just, that's, that's a lot. Don't you think so? Oh, yeah. Too long. We went to 12-hour mm. shifts. It's probably been in the neighborhood four to six months, maybe. What were you on before that? I was working uh, four to two o'clock in the morning. Who were the guys that you worked with on that shift? Uh, who were the guys on that shift? Uh, it, was, it was me. Jason Ellis was on that shift. Notice how Jason Ellis was the first one that popped into his mind, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, Andrew was on third. Nathan Phillips, I believe, was on second. Michael Medley. So he would know exactly I mean, with all of everything some point or another, when you know, he was going to leave everything. But there was five or six of us on that shift, so. Um, when's, the, when's the last time that you had seen Crystal? I'm sure it was sometime I seen her just driving around out on the road, but I don't really remember where I was at or. So you knew her. You knew her enough to know her car. To know what her car was. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What kind of car did she drive? A maroon uh, Impala. Okay. Maroon Impala. And she lived with uh, your brother at the Glenview address. She did. Hmm. And was she, I mean, was she way back when she saw you? Oh, you, yeah, she saw me. She, you know, I mean, she I, probably would recognize me in the truck. If I was out in the cruise, you know, usually she'd see me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really a car person, but do you know, like, exactly what, like, if you have a friend, do you know exactly the type of car they drive and everything? I'm literally typing. Yeah. Strange. He knows nothing about her, never sees her, maybe saw her yeah. last year, but knows exactly what kind of car she drives. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe he knows because when she was reported missing that was in the and maybe he's a cop and he's a cop and he notices cars or something but I, I i couldn't tell you what i i know that my friend has a car i don't really give a shit what brand or model it is but but yeah. you just give um ammunition to the the weirdos that uh we share a brain okay <laughs> we do share a brain damn it i keep giving it away okay <laughs> um so how many how often would you see her out on the road? I mean, was it obviously more often than you saw her person, but probably maybe two or three times a week. Okay. I mean, he was so quick with maroon and Paula, you know. Like I really so had a clue what my brother did. Seeing her, she yeah. was in a car driving around. That's what I'm assuming. I don't. I, I'm not 100 percent, but I, yeah, I'm almost for certain. Okay. The last time that you actually were in the physically in the same room with her. When was that? I was on the fourth. Oh, at night. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't really remember. We were talking Christmas, Thanksgiving, <laughs> or the third, before what? that, after that. I don't remember. Could have been Christmas, Thanksgiving. Okay. I mean, did she? What? What did she? Wait, what's the night again of the the their date night? Was that the third or fourth? The night before the fourth of July. Okay, so yeah. the third. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk about anything specific. Anybody in specific? I don't remember that. I can't remember okay. what I did two days ago. <laughs> you know, I really. Okay. Um, so you said your brother and her seemed happy? For the most part, they did. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, you know, for the most part, you said, what, what, what about well, it? I, there's one example I can think of. You know, I think there's been times when Brooks said that, you know, I think sometimes she complained that, uh, you know, maybe he treated his son better than her kids or something okay. like that, but that's that's about the only thing that really stands out. Sure. But nothing nothing that, like, was seriously stirring in the relationship? No. Just at all. Um, okay, so so you said the last the last time you saw her was within the last probably within the last uh, couple weeks, maybe last couple weeks. Um, did she have a job? Well, they they weren't married, Annie. They were just boyfriend girlfriend. She was thinking of leaving him, I think. Uh, I think at one time she worked up at the fast food mart on Bloomfield Road, but okay. that's been some time ago. Since then, I mean, do you know where she's working at? Or is, does she have a job? I'm not even sure. Okay. Uh, did she help Brooks out on, on with the rental rental properties? Or? See, I don't know anything about that. Right. Okay. Um, and w when when you would get together, as you know, uh, as you know, just you and her and Brooks, or or a bigger part of the family, where would you all get together at? Yeah, I don't know that we ever really got together. I mean, you know, obviously she's been over at mom's house, you know, mm -hmm. and I've seen her out there, but I mean that that's been a while back. Okay. So we really didn't we really didn't get together. Okay. Now, is your mom's house down uh what kind is of the y'all's family farm? Mm hmm Pasco Ballard Road. Okay. Um I think we went out there or I went out there the other day. There's a, a like a black barn kind of mm -hmm. a thing. It's called the Skid House. Skid House, okay. Um was there a sawmill in there one time? I saw the salt cedar. My, there. Yeah, my grandfather, he, he did. He okay. had a sawmill. I saw the salt cedar. I said, there's got to be a, a portable mill here somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, my grandfather, you know, he died when I was like maybe six or seven. So, I mean, it's been, it's been a long time. Yeah, that's been a long, okay. a long time. Right. Yeah, that, that had nothing to do with case. That's just my own, my own person because I love cedar. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, you don't remember the last time that you had seen Crystal? How about uh, when do you find out Crystal was missing? When do you remember finding out? Yeah, within a couple of days. Okay. Um, how, how did you find out? I think, I don't know if I saw it on TV or. Yeah, I really don't know. TV. I mean, you don't, don't think your brother would have called you? I saw it on TV. It right. was all over Facebook and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, national news. I mean, this is this is, for all intents and purposes, your sister-in-law, mm -hmm. and she she's missing. I mean, you, do do you and your brother just not talk to that extent that, you know, he that's, that's kind of bad, isn't it? I mean, you know, so you just did it again. You just did it again. Never, he never called you and told you she was missing, or <laughs> no, nobody else in your family called and told you that she was missing. Or called and asked, had you seen her? Yeah. <laughs> It was it unusual for her to take off like that? Or? I know Brooks has said she's taken off to her, uh, I think her mom's before, but I, you know, I, I didn't know anything about that either. So, I mean, I, I know when you get baby mama drama, you try to stay out of it, but I mean, you would think yeah. if he was really, you know, concerned that he would, mm -hmm. hey, my brother's a police officer, he knows what to do, let me let me call him and see what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's not like that. Okay. So you, you don't know how you found out she was missing, whether it was from Facebook or TV or, or if he mentioned it. No. I mean. No, that's exactly like that. Of course he would contact him, like right away. You know, I'd be the first person that Brooks uh, would call would be Nick, even if it was a non-nefarious situation. You know, he's just trying to distance himself from Brooke, Brooks this whole time. I hate his name, by the way. I mean, I like the name Brooke, but his name, it just, it just bugs me every time because I keep having to say Brooks and I think I'm talking about a girl but because there's a friend of uh, Crystal named Brooke, right? Right. <laughs> and it's Brooks Hauk. Like, yeah. can we not? Yeah, Ugh. Brooks, you know. I talk, you know, I've <laughs> people have watched it, you know, talk to me yeah. about it, so... Like I said, it's ran together at this point. Sure. I mean, has he, he talked? Has he talked to you about it a lot, or very little, if any? You know, I mean, okay. like, I mean, what, what's what's he said? I don't know that he said much of anything. I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna 
I guess I'm not really going to bring it up to him because, I mean, I, you know, I know him well. I know he's a good guy and that he mm-hmm. wouldn't have anything to do with something. All right, she's missing, and he's just not going to bring it up, and they're not going to talk about it at all. I don't know if he said anything about it. Come well, on. Well, that girl just had a good point. She said, but B said that they talk all the time in his interview, and he called during the interview. It's my brother. We talk all the time. But now he's saying, oh, no, we don't really. Yeah, right. and that's, that's why oh. he's so suspicious because he's just distancing himself from his brother. Something like this, so I mean, I'm not going to sit there and question him about it, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just feel like I know for sure that he had nothing to do with her disappearance or whatever, and I mean, I, that's just where I'm at. Sure, sure. Um, but I mean, you would you kind of kind of see the flip side of that coin too, don't you? That he's if he's really concerned about her coming home, you might you might he might be talking, you know, man, we got to do something to find her, we got to do this, we got to do that. Yeah. Um, but he's never mentioned anything like that to you. What's what's been the mo- one thing he's mentioned to you the most during this whole thing? Nothing stands out. Nothing no, stands out. Um, <clears throat> so she goes, and, and I'm kind of working third party here. So so forgive me, and you may have a better idea on the timeline. Uh, Friday night the third, I think, was the last time that anybody said they they saw her. Right? Mm-hmm. Where was that at? Do you know? I think somebody said it was at Walmart. Okay. So, obviously she gets reported missing on the 5th, is that right? Yes, the Saturday. Yeah. She goes missing on Friday. Saturday's the 4th. Sunday. Sunday's the 5th. Yeah. So that's when she gets reported missing. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And he never called you for any advice on what to do? No. Bullshit. uh, I mean, would that be unusual? I don't think so. Um, when did, so did he ever call you after he reported her missing? I'm sure at some point he's called. I mean, I don't really remember what he asked about, but. Okay. Like, was that before? Do you remember when he was interviewed? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. When, when was that? Uh, a few yeah, days yeah, after the go. fact. I mean, I. Like a few days after what? A few days, a few days after everything came out, the SO started interviewing. Okay. Well, hold on. That was a good. That, was, that, did, that, that was awesome by that investigator. Let me hear that again. I'm sure at some point he's called. I mean, I don't really remember what he asked about, but okay. Like, was that before? Do you remember when he was interviewed? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. When, when was that? Uh, a few days after the fact. I mean, I. After the fact, and then the detective goes, "After what?" Yeah, I guess like what you know, what does he know? You know? <laughs> what fact? Yeah. Uh, can you make the video take up that whole space, Gray? I or could, not? but what different? You know why? Because some of us are old. Come on, it's like, I, I, I want to just what? it's fine. You don't need you need to see the time on the clock. Oh, you're not my friend. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I, I I think I'd have to move this thing, but then I can't. Okay, let's see. But now it's going to be all. Hey, there you go. Look at that. But How I like, easy to, have, I like that? to have the controls on there. I know you do. They're crazy. Get better glasses, people. All right, here we go. A few days, a few days after everything came out, the SO started interviewing. Okay. Uh, did you make a phone call to him when the SO was interviewing him? Yes, I did. Um, matter of fact, I think it was a couple phone calls, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. To see what? And people you know, sitting? Kind of got a little, little spat on the phone, or it seemed like that to yeah. some people. What, 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 what did you call well, it? Well, you know, just basically, I mean, Brooks is a really cooperative guy, and, you know, obviously at this point you want to be cooperative, but you sure. also want to protect now, yourself. Now i got to go back and hear that part, sorry. A few days after the fact, I mean, not... Like a few days after what? After what? A few, yeah. days, a few days after everything came out, and the SO started interviewing. Okay. Ah. Uh, did you make a phone call to him when the SO was interviewing him? Yes, I did. Um, How could he I, have I found out a few days over. after mm-hmm. when they were interviewing you know, him? Got a little little spat on the phone, or it seemed like yeah, that. He had a call. Yeah, he never even talked well, to him. What, See, what, that's what, the what, thing. Is he's well, just basically, I mean, Brooks is a really cooperative guy, and you know, obviously. I almost want to listen to that again because it, I think that's a big <laughs> moment, you know. Did so? Did he ever call you after he reported her missing? I'm sure at some point he's called. I mean, I don't really remember what he asked. 
about it, but don't cry. Okay. Like was that before? Do you remember when he was interviewed? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. When, when was that? Uh, a few days after the fact. I mean, I. So I guess he could have when he finally was told. He, you know, I, I I don't know. He was told by his brother. He did say, he did talk to him, right? Yeah. So they're saying, okay, when did you find out? He's saying, I'm not a hundred percent sure. How did you find out? I think Facebook or the news. It's national. So then he's saying, well, when did you talk to him? And he knows that he was interviewed, so he can't say that he didn't know before the interview because then it really looked crazy. But he said a few days after. But the interview he was referring to was a few days after the fact. And this guy knows, he he thinks he's involved. So he goes, uh, a few days after what? You know, like, mm. what is the fact that it's after? You know, right. because he, you know, that's the thing that's kind of weird. This guy right here, oh, I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see anything. This guy right here mm-hmm. is really analyzing him the whole time. This guy is just the guy talking, and this guy's over here really. You just, can tell he's listening. Uh, yeah, very focused in on catching something, you know. Like a few days after what? A few days A few days after everything came out, and the yeah, SO started. A little pause, interview. and they. Did you make a phone call to him when the SO was interviewing him? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, I think it was a couple phone calls, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know, kind of got a little little spat on the phone, or it seemed like that to, to yeah. some people. Yeah. What what what? Why did you call? Well, him? I, you know, just basically. I mean, Brooks is a really cooperative guy, and you know, obviously at this point you want to be cooperative, but you sure. also want to protect yourself. And I think at a time like this right here, I mean, obviously you wouldn't be thinking exactly straight. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that he was kind of you know protecting himself while that he cooperated with law enforcement, and mm-hmm. so I didn't want him to. I mean, it's just easy to get things confused and stuff, and, you know, so. Well, I mean, you know, you, you said yourself he, he's a cooperative guy, and you trust him and mm-hmm. to know that he's not involved in this. Then what, what reservations would you have about him talking? Well, for one, it, the guy that's interviewing him has openly admitted that he lies in court. Okay. So, I mean, that kind of bothered me a little bit that John was doing it, but, you know, that's just the way it is, you know. I mean. But he knows what, we can't, we can't pick and choose what calls yeah, we most get. most definitely. So, yeah. What do you think about uh, your brother? He took a polygraph, didn't he? Mm-hmm. What do you think about the results I, of the polygraph? I, I don't think they would have passed him no matter what, you know. I mean, I think he went up there and did well, and I think that's just what they said, you know. I mean, what, I mean, why would you say that it wouldn't matter? Yeah, it just it just seems like it doesn't matter what he does or says. You know, everybody's kind of like pointing the finger at him. I mean, I, that would be natural, but... Sure. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it, at this point, it doesn't matter what he does, you know, he looks like the bad one, so that's the reason why I feel like I do. Well, and that's one of the things we did. We, we called and checked with our polygraphers because, mm. I mean, I don't know what experience you've had with them. Or none, I mean. You know, I, we, we use them all the time, and, and I'd put them up against any, any of them in the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're that good. Yeah. And, uh, and they work for the state police. They don't work for me. They don't work for you guys here. They don't work mm-hmm. for the sheriff's department. They don't have any interest in these cases except to run the polygraph. That's mm-hmm. all that their interest is. But uh, you know, just some feedback from them. You know, and you know, it, was, it, it is what it is. It was inconclusive. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've never even heard of one being inconclusive. Like yeah, that. Yeah, but, but, but again, I don't that. know nothing about them, so sure. that doesn't surprise me. Sure. Well, me and him both can, can can tell you we've learned a lot more about the polygraph in the last four or five years than we ever thought we would. Mm-hmm. So. So you talked to him on that day that he was having the interview, mm-hmm. uh, or you called him. Uh, I think I called him once, and I think the uh, task force guys had his phone. Well, see, the thing is, is, the fact that he called Brooks during that interview, and, and actually it sounds like it was set up, but obviously he had talked to him many times because he's so aware of what the story is, and he's going to get tripped up. You know, he doesn't mm-hmm. want Brooks to get tripped up, so he calls him up. Right. He's aware that he's there during the time that he's there. So if yeah. you never talked to him, how did you know that he was being yeah. questioned at the police station? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just kind of like. And you're a cop. You're calling in the middle because you <laughs> and the detective interviewing your brother, he d- he doesn't like that detective. So you call in the middle of an interrogation. I actually think that I'm um, starting to believe in psychics and EVP. You know. Yes. Have you ever thought of that? That would work. Hold on, let me get it. Hello. That'd work. You should get one. I'll send you this one. 
Stupid. Ah, did you hear that? He said stupid in there. I heard it. It's that was awesome. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then at some point, I guess I gave him the phone back, and then I got a hold of him. But he'd been up here several hours. You know, it wasn't like I just interrupted right from the very beginning. I thought, what, you know, what the hell are they doing? You so know, I mean, I'm asking the same questions over and over. How, what these guys done? How, how did you know he had been up here for several hours? I guess he, you know, I, get, I think he called me. Okay, so he called you before and said, hey, I'm going to the PD, I'm getting ready to get here. Yeah, I think, uh -huh. And what did you tell him at that point? I said, go for a big cooperative, you know. Say what you mean and mean what you say and just, you know, do the best you can. Did And what did you say to him after when you said he'd been here for a couple hours? What was... What was I just asked him, I said, what, you know, what the hell's going on up there? They're asking the same questions over and over, trying to trip you up. What, what, what's the deal? And he said he was given a... Uh, detailed statement or whatever. I was like, well, that's fine, you know, just, uh, you know, at a time like this, you know, uh, things are spinning, you know, just, you got you got to protect yourself while you cooperate, just kind of. Did you ever tell him to leave the interview? No, I didn't tell him to leave the interview. Things are spinning. Yeah, but if you just took off, things aren't really spinning, you know, like you're just, yeah. And I mean, look at his personality, too. Brooks, you know, he doesn't seem like somebody that I mean, though he presents himself as there's nothing spinning out of control, you know. So it's just kind of everything. I don't know. This guy. They're right the here. same. Both of them. Both yeah. of these brothers act like they act like they're talking about a regular day, a football game, or something. Both of the brothers, like she's missing. She, yeah, she's a mom. Yeah, she lived with Brooks for years. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but 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 um, but Nick, <laughs> like man. it's the most casual thing ever. But aren't you worried about her, Nick? Because yet there was a flat tire, her purse and everything was in the car. What do you think about that? I mean, how come they don't ask something like that? That would be such a great. Yeah, have you helped search? Have you been out there? Yeah. You must be really worried. Yeah, and because it looks like she was abducted, Nick. Why aren't you guys a little bit more proactive and trying to help find her? Nothing. Yeah. Hmm. Did Did you ever tell him to seek legal counsel before talking to the police again? No. Okay. Um. Of course you did. So you, you, you didn't tell him you need to get out of there or you don't no. trust these folks up here? No, I said go ahead and finish your uh, go ahead and finish your narrative, whatever it is, your written statement that, you, that you're giving them, but just, uh, you know, just, just watch what you're doing, you know. Th you know, be sure you're thinking clearly and cooperate and go along with it. I mean, you know, I guess the, the conundrum I'm kind of having in my own head, because like I said, we're coming at this from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't we don't have a vested interest in it. We're only one way or the other because it's yeah. you know not our not our baby. But mm -hmm. you know, if he's if he's to the point that you're worried about him thinking straight, don't you think he would be talking about it more to you or to your family members about you know well, well I wonder where she's at. I wonder where, what happened. Yeah, I, I think people deal with problems in different ways. I mean, I you know I can psychoanalyze it. Sure. But uh, yeah, just different people handle things different. Okay. And is this typically how he handles a stressful situation? I mean, you've, you've, you've been brothers for yeah, 30 I, some years now, so. Yeah, I mean, I really haven't uh, ran across another situation like this, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know anything compared to. Well, I mean, you know, say, say for example, he's got, you know, three rental properties that need this, this, and this done, and he's got two houses he's got to get put up, or, mm -hmm. or something's got to get done that week. How does he handle that stress? I mean, does he just go forward? Does it crumple up like a like a piece of paper? Well, I mean, he's got a hundred thousand. What do you think? He goes forward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And and you know, Katie barred the doors. We're getting this done. Is that pretty much how he. You know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Is that? Yeah. Right? I, just, I just I think he tries to do the best he can. If he can, and he just goes on. I mean, obviously his stress level is going to be up. You know, with all sure. the rental properties and everything. But I mean, he's been pretty successful. So. Sure. Sure. But I'm not right there walking along with him, so I can't really testify okay. as to what he's actually doing from day to day. Okay. So you all have said you, you, you've been out to the farm, and, and do you all go out there together to work, or do you? Or whatever. I mean, he does his thing, and I do mine. Okay. If we do like another half hour, we'll be halfway through Nick's. Do you want to do that? or? Yeah, I think that's perfect, about another 25 minutes or so. Try and wrap it up around four. Yeah. Like I don't make this. Fish, yeah, we well, I think we're at two. I see it. An, the halfway mark is like two. Um, like, yeah, it's like about um, 30 minutes, actually. But Okay. Yeah. Four wheelers. 
you know, right. it's just a place to go to and relax. And how many acres is it? Two, two fifty to three hundred, maybe. Been in the family for a long time, or yeah. Yeah, my grandfather. I don't know what year he bought it, but I mean, it would have had to have been probably fifties or sixties, something like that. Wow, yeah, it's been in the family for for a long time then. Mm -hmm. um, so when. I know you said you got the what, skid house, is that what you called it? Uh -huh. That's um, where they put them. I mean, he built skids for a living, so okay. that's what they stored them in. Gotcha. They just kind of adopted the name. and. Okay. I mean, do, do you, each of you have your own area out there, or is it all his? Is it all... I mean, we all use it, but I mean, it's it's his place, you know. Okay. His and mom's. But I mean, do you have like a, a... Is it like... Is it just communal tools and tractors and things like that, or do you have like a... These are, these are Nick's tools, these are Brooks' tools. No, man, no. So Brooks and Mom's own that? Hmm? Did you hear that part? Uh, he says it's his and Mom's. It's his place, his and Mom's. Can you rewind that like 15 seconds? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know how. I don't know how far. You know, some people have like their own individual sections of, yeah. of things. How come? Maybe right in there. I don't. I don't even get into that, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's in Mom's name, though. So I mean, it, it's it's your all yours just as much as his, right? Well, no, no, I mean, I think he paid for it. So I mean, really, I, it, it's in Mom's name. He paid for it. It's kind of a messed up deal. But okay, no, so I mean, it, if it's been the family since the fifties, how would he have paid for it? Did he buy? He, he bought it. There's, tw there's twelve. There's twelve or thirteen brothers and sisters. Oh. Okay. And they sold the farm, and he bought it. Okay. Okay. So he he bought it with the rest sense. of the family. Yeah. Okay. He, he bought it. So Nick owns the farm? Gotcha. Looks that way. when Grandpa hmm. passed, I guess, is that when that all happened, or was it before? Oh, no, that? Grandpa passed when I was like five or six. Okay. And then my grandmother just died, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Okay. So when, when she passed, then that's when yes. he, he bought out the other brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. Okay. So when, when... Wait, so the grandmother's not a lot... Wait, I don't get that part. How did she die? What grandparent died? So the grandfather bought it in the 50s. So there was a grandfather and a grandmother. Yeah. Then their child was Nick and Brooke's mother. And they had, she had 12 brothers and sisters. They sold or they were selling the farm and Brooks bought it mm. and put it in his and his mother's name. That's what I'm getting from that. Oh, so the mother is the one. Okay. She's, she's quite a bit older than them though I mean it's like she's like isn't she really pretty old like 70 or 80 her, their mother their mother I'm not I don't know sure I always thought of her as like the look. grandmother for some reason but maybe I was thinking the grandmother the grandmother of the baby of the baby yeah. Yeah. Hmm. when was the last time I guess you and him were out there together well, it was I on the third. I mean, the uh, last uh, couple of weeks, you know. I mean, <laughs> we run into each other out there, you know. I mean, he mm -hmm. he takes stuff out there. You know, he's he's got a pile of stuff out there that you know from his building sites. He'll pile it up out there instead of taking it to the landfill. And I guess where he's too tight to pay the landfill bill, you know. But I mean, we run into each other, but we're both so busy, we just kind of pass, you know. Okay. Uh, so, it, oh, so he's illegally dumping stuff on his own properly. Huh. Well, Grandma is still or was Probably. still alive. So uh, I'm looking at an yeah, article. Here she's still from alive. So who was he talking about? I don't know, but maybe she didn't want anything. Anna Whiteside previously owned the car yeah, Whiteside, that the yeah. Commonwealth believes could have been used in the crime. What? Yeah. So I have the grand. See, the thing is, the grandmother right there. Anna Whiteside garage. Right yeah. Here. See, I've got her. Yeah, Anna Whiteside. I've got her right here on my on here. You can't see it because we uh, it zoomed in, but so maybe they were divorced and he didn't leave her the farm. So she something? lived right here or something. I don't know. Anna Whiteside. This is a a house of hers right there. That one. Um, got to write this down and study this little lady. Yeah. So who's he talking about? Who's dead? The other side of the family, Grandma. Well, I think he was saying Grandpa's dead. Did you say grandma? Okay, Anna is Brooks' dad's mom. Brooks' dad's mom. Okay, so it's the other side of the family. Anna is Brooks' dad's mom, not Brooks' mom's mom. I got ya. So who so owned the farm? Who is owned owned the by Brooks and his mom now. Right. Okay, so that makes sense. 
All right, let me get back. A couple of weeks would have been before or after Crystal went missing. I've seen him out there after. After? Yeah. Okay. Was it, do you specifically remember what day? I don't. Okay. There's a camera out there. I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. it, it can be checked. Okay. Um, you, and do you have, do you drive your cruiser out there? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's not uncommon for you to drive it out there? No. I use cruiser all the time. Chief wants us to, you know, he wants us to use them off duty. That way it just kind of provides deterrence and mm -hmm. Chief loves that. Yep. You'd be seen, oh, there's police everywhere, I understand. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a kind of kind of the same mentality we have uh, from our commissioner. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, what when you drive the cruiser out there, what are you going out there to do? Just hang yeah, out or? Just ride the four-wheelers, hike. Okay. So you're not going out there to hook a trail or anything to back your cruiser and tow oh, back into town? Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Um, all right. So you said within the last couple of weeks, and it was, so we can specifically say in the last week. See, look at this um, guy. He's just today's the. Uh, 15th he was just looking at him the whole time. Was last seen on the third. So between the third and the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you've you've been out there with him. I mean, did you go out there together? Did you meet him out there? No, I didn't. He just, he was just having to be out there. Okay. Um. I mean, did, did you talk to your mom? Did you, were, were you at her house? Did you go about fishing? Yeah, I mean, we don't need to get caught up too much into the details about, like, who owns this much of the farm and all that kind of stuff. The thing is, is he has access to the farm. That's really what matters, right? Yeah, I really wanted to know if he had, like, free reign of the farm. He could just do whatever well, he wanted. Well, I'm sure he can, because it's like his mom, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. you know, he can do whatever he wants out there. Didn't you have yeah, check yeah. on cattle? What, I mean, what'd you do? Four wheeler riding and cattle. I mean, I saw mom. I don't really remember what we talked about, you know, but we just more or less passed off. So, I mean, I don't always stop at the house. Okay. When you talked about, you said there's cameras out there. What are you talking about? Well, they said there's one right there at Patty and Lawrence's house. I mean, right as soon as you start up Pascal Ballard Lane, you know, the first house on the right, yes. there's a camera on that house. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you meant on the farm. No. There's a camera. Uh, okay. I guess. The, I mean, it's no secret that, that your cruiser was, you know, the chief asked you to bring it in. Yeah. Uh, he didn't ask me to bring it in. He came to my house. Okay. Yeah. When, what, what, what do you normally keep in your trunk? What's, what's a normal duty set up? Like, I know ours looks like, you know, evident oh, store exploded in our trunk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I've got a cardboard box back there. And I mean, it's got, you know, say it's got a flashlight. For, so we're obviously rechargeable flashlights in the car. There's a uh, mini forms. There's an, there's a, a PBT, fire extinguisher. There's a department issued shotgun in the car. There's a bag up front with all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in those cars. You generally keep all that stuff in your trunk all the time? Some of it's in the trunk, some of it's up front in the seat. You know, all the all the forms I use every day would be up front. You know, I've got something that attaches to the passenger seat and it's got all the forms. I actually report forms and all that stuff I use every day. You take that car home with you. It's a take home car. Yes. Nobody else uses it unless no. something was to come up. The only person that's ever, the only other person that's used that car is uh, Tom Blair. It was issued to him first, and then it was passed down to me. Uh, but that's, no you know, that's been a while that. back. Yeah. How long has that been? You think? That's been a couple of years. Okay. Um. So you've been the only one that's driven it in the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Um, do y'all have stop sticks or anything, stingers? I don't. I mean, yeah, there's some units do. Okay. So what you keep in the trunk is a cardboard box with some extra stuff in it, fire extinguisher. Hats, just rain jackets. Hats, rain jackets. I mean, I could sit here and try to take you ride them. I probably wouldn't come up with half of them. I mean, I mean, you know, any conspiracy is possible. That's why it's like people bring them up. But sure, devil's advocate. Yeah, that's what he was going to do. He was going to kill his brother and, you know, blame. Well, first of all, he killed Crystal, then blamed it on Brooks. And Brooks has no knowledge of it at all. And then he's going to kill uh, Brooks later and control the entire property. And, okay. Yeah. And don't forget the Illuminati and the uh, alien abduction portions. Hey, when they uh, took your car, when the PD took your car <laughs> from your house. <laughs> See, what, uh, what Chasing's going to give a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> like, maybe. Like the jury came up. With, look, just all the stuff I just <laughs> told you. But there was also uh, one thing I can remember. Because there was a, uh, I don't know, just a, just a regular blanket for moving. You know, where I moved from 104 Glenview Drive to where I'm at now, 
I took the blanket that was there and I just put it between furniture to keep it from marring up the fur, you know, mm-hmm. the finish on it. So it went down the road. I guess it was going to jingle around and I would have been in the truck of your cruiser. Mm-hmm. You had furniture in the truck. No, no, I didn't. Uh, uh, no, what I did, I got the blanket at the farm. I used it and then I was going to take it back in a few days. I forgot about it. Mm-hmm. So it's sitting there in the trunk, you know. But no, I use I use my trailer and truck. Okay. So instead of putting it in the truck, you put it in the trunk of the cruiser, though. Yeah, I was going to return it back out there. So I just uh, took put it in the trunk, and then when I was out there, I was just going to return it okay. where I found it. She's just not never get around to it. I didn't. Where did where you said? You what item are they farm? talking about right there? Get it from? The skid house. The blanket. Oh, well, the blanket. Important. Where we're at specifically yeah. in the skid yeah. house. Uh, and when you walk in the front door, right there on the right hand side. Okay. Do the other blankets look just like that blanket? Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, I mean, it'd be easy to, to say, look, there's still two blankets here. And that's the same blanket yeah. as what was there. I think so. Now, now were, were all those things in, in your trunk when they took the car mm-hmm. other than the blanket? So She's probably so a nothing, nothing was missing out of your trunk as far as your fire extinguisher it was in there. Everything, everything was in there with the blanket. Okay, so everything was in your trunk, just like you carry it when you go to mm-hmm. work, except the blanket was in there with it. Yeah. So do you, do you remember going out to the farm the evening of July the eighth? Uh, I missed that part. I was dealing with the alien stuff. So what was the what was the blank? What's the deal with the blanket? The blanket was in the trunk and it was missing later or something. Or I mean, how does it even get known that there was a blanket in there? So I think they've already searched his patrol car Mm -hmm. and they're asking him, so what do you keep in your trunk? And do you only drive it, you know, these certain times? Well, there's a blanket in his patrol car from the farm. Now, I think what they're trying to do here is insinuate that he was at the farm that same night and very likely use that blanket in part of the crime because he's saying oh yeah yeah, i used it before when i was moving or something and i just never returned it i don't know but there i know there's something critical to this blanket i remember it being that something is about to happen here i haven't watched this one in a while not own, but i very easily could have been out there yeah 2018 was when i watched that was that was was, incidentally the same night that your brother was same night your brother was interviewed by police yeah wednesday july Mm -hmm. See, now uh, they get him right here. You, you guys were both there July there 8th that after your brother was interrogated. Uh, you guys were both the there. would have caught your, your car following Brooks. Wouldn't surprise, the out to the, wouldn't to surprise me. But uh, you said generally, you know, you would just go out to the farm and you would just meet him there. On this occasion, you all both would. Well, usually I, usually I don't meet him there. I mean... You know, he's just out there doing his own thing, and yeah. then I go out there and do my own thing. I mean, well, I mean, if that's what happened that night, it would have been just perfect timing that you were following right behind him, mm-hmm. that you just so happened to meet him at the farm. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh-huh. So, so think back. Was there a time that you all both went out there at the same time for a specific reason? Not that I recall. So it just would have been quick. Yeah. So what he's trying to get at is they must have communicated and said, "Hey, we need to go meet at the farm," and they both were seen on camera right around the same time not the typical just randomly showing up when uh brooks is out there so in this now case they followed each other in yeah. car to car so that means there was something planned and now he's saying not that i can recall what's well, an obvious lie you know i mean the odds are so slim that they just randomly happen to be going out there at the same time yeah and he's a cop yeah how do you not remember this it was a couple of days ago yeah they're both very like I can't remember the things that actually matter. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Since your car was following. Right I mean, what what I have noticed is how detailed they are on everything that, other than the things that actually matter in the investigation. <laughs> yeah. I don't recall. I don't recall. But boy, my God, they'll go on for hours. On About a gas this, station, this, and then they yeah. turned right on this street. I'm like, yeah, it's incredible. Your girlfriend's missing. His truck when it passed by that camera going to the farm. Yeah, that's happened before. Mm-hmm. So this night in particular. It would have been, you would have left after dark. Y'all came together and, and you would have left after dark. Do you remember he, that night? Easily could have. Okay. I mean, do, I mean, do you remember it? No, well, I don't. Okay. Um, do you remember, did you all, were you all in the skid house? Were you, were you at your mom's talking? 
No, I mean, I can't even remember what he was doing. I mean, that was the 8th, that's the 15th, I don't I mean, do you, do, you, do you remember being out here, out there with him at the farm that evening? I think I remember seeing him out there. Okay, so you didn't, you, you're, you're saying you didn't intentionally follow him out there, and did you all leave, do you remember leaving together? Mm-mm. Why did, why did he leave earlier, or you leave earlier, do you remember? I don't have any idea. Did you leave first, or did he leave first? I don't know. Well, you just said you but knew. you remember? I mean, you said you're, it's just I think a week I ago, mm -hmm. driving down past the well, your car behind his truck. I mean, you got to turn in the farm there. Do <clears throat> you remember? You, can you can you go back and put that in your head? Just driving down that road. And <laughs> How you does he not remember that? In front of you. What happened after that? I can't. Oh bullshit! Oh bullshit! Let's let's go back. You remember talking to your brother? Oh on the god, phone I want to. Oh here, god. Right? Mm -hmm. What did you do after you got off the phone with him? I really don't know. Okay. Do you smoke? No. Chew tobacco? No. Drink? Nope. No. Drink coffee? Nope. You know what I mean, fun, do you? What's that? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Working all the time, like. Yeah, that guy, he, he's awesome, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, God, what a great person, man. Um, so, it, it was possible that y'all were out at the farm together that night. You just don't remember specifically. You said the eighth? Yeah. Could have been. Right. Did you work on the eighth last Wednesday? Did you work on Wednesdays? He doesn't know. What day did you take the car? Because that would I haven't been on Thursday. Thursday the ninth. I, I don't think I could. If I was at the farm on Wednesday, then I couldn't have worked. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. So, what days are you generally off? <laughs> Let's see. So, like one week, I'll be off. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back Monday, work Tuesday, off Wednesday, okay. work Thursday, Friday, so it's it's hard to keep up with. Sure. I mean, it's a mess. Well, <laughs> well, how, how, do you, how do you keep up with it? I've got a, a schedule at home. Okay. Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to leave my schedule still today, mm -hmm. even five, six months later. Now, what time do you, what's your normal shift time end? Seven o'clock. So, so, so say if you were, if you went out to the farm, eight eight thirty. Well, it. then I could have. Oh, then I could have swung that. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so it's safe to say that if you were driving your cruiser out to the farm, you weren't working. Oh, most definitely. Because you don't leave the city to go out to the farm no, while you're no, working, no, right? I wouldn't do that. Okay. So you wouldn't do that. So you would have been off. That was remember back. That was the same day that he was up here being interviewed. Mm -hmm. Okay, it would have been Wednesday. If he was up here interviewed, you had phone conversations with him before he came up here. Mm -hmm. um, he told you he was coming up here, and then after a couple hours, you called, checked on him, you know, told him to protect himself, whatever it was, the conversation that you mm -hmm. had. And then after that phone call, within two hours, both of y'all were driving to the farm mm -hmm. on the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know all that. There's no debate about that. We know that. Mm -hmm. What we need to know is why y'all both went down to the farm. Because I know, I know it's going to be hard for you to remember a week ago. No, it's not. It's not hard to remember anything. Like if that. I'm thinking about. See, the thing is, you're going to remember everything about something like that when it matters. Like there's, a, you're going to be thinking about it every single. Uh, like as uh, soon as you found out that she was missing, you'd go back in your mind. You remember every single detail. But he doesn't remember anything that mm -hmm. implicates him at all. It's just sort of. It's two hours after Brooks' interview ends. Yeah. You both end up there. You just called him two and a half hours ago. So, of course, you want to know how the interrogation went. And they know they have That's phone records. That's why you were there. They probably have phone records that show there was calls made or answered after the interrogation to say, hey, we need to go meet out the property, something like that, right? Unbelievable. And watch his face. He's like, I don't know. Yeah, he's just, he's kind of like, wow, you kind of got me here. Conversation I had with my brother and something like this going on because yeah. this doesn't go on all the time. So, I mean, yeah, we're going to call it Boom. like it is. All right, that's it. Is it you don't want to remember or can you remember? I, I can't remember. Okay. Because this is what's happened. You made a phone call. He was up here within two hours of him leaving here. Both of y'all were on the road on the way to the farm, and the camera shows that. Mm -hmm. Time and date stamp. Phone call, time and date stamped. You're out there. What what went on while you're out there at the farm? Yeah, 
if, if I knew, I'd tell you. I mean, I wish I could give you a detailed <laughs> written statement. I don't he know. doesn't remember what they did at the farm. Four, yeah. It's kind of Less than a week before. Here yeah. for a minute. Do you, or is there any reason week. that there be any blood in, your, in the trunk of your cruiser? Mm -hmm. No reason at all. So you don't transport any biological evidence on a regular basis? Uh, when, when's the last scene that you had somebody that was bleeding? How long has it been? Oh, I mean, I'm sure it's maybe a wreck or something like that. That's been a long time ago. Okay. I mean, we're there's no, I can tell you, there's no blood in front of my cruiser. Yeah, see, here's the thing is, I actually believe him here. I think that there is, I think he knows that he planned it so well that he didn't put, if there is blood in there, it's not related to Crystal Rogers. Because this is related to the blanket. See, I, I know, but they, they, there's a whole blanket thing. I've heard that, but I think that if they had the blood, they would have. He'd be in prison. If, like right now, if Crystal Rogers' blood was in the back of his cruiser, he wouldn't still be walking around in society. Right? That's enough for a grand jury to, to indict and press charge. That would be absolutely enough, right there. In my, yeah, I mean, opinion. they're allowed to lie to him. He probably knows that. But. I think he planned it. So he, right there, he goes. You, know, you see how sure he was of that, though? See, that's the thing. is I think he planned this whole thing, and he's like, well, I, just, I know for sure her blood wasn't in my cruiser, you know, because it doesn't match what, you know. I mean, I know the blanket's involved in there somewhere, but let's just hear that one part again. Uh, when, when was the last scene that you had somebody that was bleeding? How long has it been? Oh, I mean, I'm sure it's maybe a wreck or something like that. That's been a long time ago. Okay. I mean, we're there's no. I can tell you, there's no blood in front of my cruiser. I can, I can guarantee you that. Yeah, because well, you know, because he probably went and cleaned the shit out of it. In your just... trunk. Would there have been blood on anything that was in your no. trunk? There's no way. Absolutely none. Now, what about the blanket that was in your trunk? No way. And you picked up that blanket when? Don't know exactly. It was uh, That's to me. Uh, two, three, four days after, you know, uh, they they filed the missing person report. Okay. So a couple, couple days, days, couple days after they filed the missing persons reports, when you picked up that blanket, used it to haul the stuff, then put it back into your cruiser. I, I think so. So that would have been how many days you think the blanket was in your cruiser trunk before Thursday when they took your cruiser? I hate, to, I hate to even put a number on it. I mean, I, I really don't know. One, two. See, what's interesting is they must think that they've got something on the blanket. and But he's very sure there isn't. And that I think he's the one that came out winning on that tot issue because he's not arrested. If they had tested DNA on that blood and it was crystals, I think he'd be... This whole thing would have unraveled quick. Well, she went missing the third, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. the third... He's saying a few days after they filed the missing report, they filed the missing report the fourth, the fourth, Fifth, I think so. I think, I think it was. So amazing. it was like the eighth or something is when he picked it up. The ninth is when he and his brother met back at the farm. So allegedly he was moving on the eighth, and that's why he needed the blanket. That's why he took the blanket. So he does. He can't. He doesn't remember. He remembers getting the blanket. And where do you get the blanket from? It. Where do you get the blanket from? Was it Brooks' house? No, it was or? at the farm in one of the farm little, you know, storage. It's things. almost like there was a conversation, like, "Hey, Brooks, uh, where where did you put that blanket you used?" And then he goes and gets it and gets it. So I don't know. And he, I think he was going to dispose of it, and he didn't. But it's weird how sure certain he is. Like, see, that thing of the guy that would plan it. He's almost like angry that they're accusing him of something that he absolutely knows that he planned for you know mm. so i don't know maybe he cleaned the blanket and he's wondering I, I don't know but he hasn't been arrested for uh anything and uh you know well other, i guess other things but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so. two three ten how many things? i'm not even gonna put a number on it i, I can't i don't i you know but you know, I mean, for, do you know for a fact it was after they filed the missing first report that you picked up the blanket? I don't even know that for a fact. Well, when did you move the furniture? I, you know, I've got a dozen rental properties. I've been moving stuff out of you know the garage over there for two or three weeks now. Hmm. You know, I, I've got the garage where 104 Glenview Drive. So a dozen what, rental properties, and you needed one blanket from the farm. Or you did just a few days. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or there's a certain day you have Might to Might leave it in his trunk, mm-hmm. though. What was that day? I mean, that's another thing, too, is like, he knows what's going on here. If that was used in a murder, would he leave it in his trunk? Wouldn't he just have disposed of it somewhere? Yeah, I mean, that would be... I mean, I would assume he would, of course. But at the same time, <laughs> when you're a property owner and it's your responsibility to move stuff in and out of storage and other things, you have moving blankets, you have equipment. You don't have to drive out to a farm to right. get a blanket that's used on a farm. That makes no sense. He had it in there for a reason. And I don't know why the hell he didn't just put it back. Maybe because he thought that they were going to be searching the farm and not his police cruiser. Yeah, but maybe, at the same time, why wouldn't you dispose of it? Why wouldn't you yeah, burn it somewhere? Should've. You know, I mean, especially a cop would know exactly what to be doing with that. Although they messed up on their their uh, theory, so who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, July the. I wish I could get the exact well, date. Well, who, who gave you the date to get out? The guy that bought it. Okay, so there's paperwork that shows he takes possession of it on a certain day. Mm-hmm. How many days before that did you move that furniture out? We can reference that. Move what furniture out now? Just all my furniture? Whatever you use the blanket for. Uh, I would say, I'd say a few, at least a few days before, you know. So a few is two, maybe? Is that, that what you would term? That's what you? I would guess to make. Okay, so say you had to be out by July ninth then a few days before that or something like that it sounds good to me i mean i i really i really don't know what was the guy's name that bought the property uh mike ballard and mike ballard is is there paperwork on that did you go through a realtor no we i sold it for sale by owner okay and uh did you do a contract or did you do a deed transfer yeah we did a contract on it okay do you have a copy of the contract somewhere uh, I do somewhere. So there'll be some way we can reference oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you tell anybody that you were on the evening of the eighth year with your girlfriend online and you didn't go anywhere? Did I tell somebody I was with my girlfriend all night? That your girl you were you were home with your girlfriend all night on the, the evening of July the eighth and didn't go anywhere. Last Wednesday, no. I don't I don't remember that. Okay. Um, who have you talked to about this so far? Yeah, I remember that from the documentary about the, the trunk. But you wonder if like, if they put her body in the trunk, drove it somewhere, dumped her body, then later drove the car, put it on the parkway, and that's why the cadaver dogs didn't find any scent of her out there, but maybe would have. I mean, not cadaver dogs. They were scent dogs, right? You'd think a cadaver dog would have picked up on some trail from the trunk but you know the thing is your body doesn't decompose that much very quickly where a cadaver dog we already went through this whole thing they don't yeah. start picking up a scent for you know of death well, for so a long time i guess in this case the kentucky lab will only take 10 pieces to do testing on in murder cases it's some kind of rule So they took whatever it was. There wasn't a ton of forensics done on her car because everything was almost untouched in her car. So not a lot was done with the car. They returned it to Sherry Ballard. Sherry Ballard had uh, dogs come out, uh, some specialized dog, Mm. cadaver dog. And the cadaver dogs, you know, started barking and, and going to the trunk. When they opened the trunk, the dog jumped inside. Like maybe, maybe maybe she was kept in the trunk on the property for a day or so, or a couple, possibly. or even a couple. I don't know where because when did they they didn't find the car? When did they find the car on there? The next day it was the fifth that they so found the fifth. Car. So she was killed on the third. Was kept the third? in the trunk, but he didn't go out there with his brother till the eighth. And um, but they, I bet he was out there on another day though. They just don't. Um, I don't know. He went out there with his cruiser following his brother on the 8th, right? In the evening? Uh, that was the Yeah, interview. vehicle July 5th. Then the 8th, the brothers are seen at 9 p.m. going to the family farm. Mm-hmm. So. But don't they yeah. have other dates that they were going out to the farm too? Uh, yeah, there are. I think there are different ones, but this one was odd because, you know, he called his brother during the interrogation and then two hours later they meet up 
Right. So at that but point, but wouldn't the car like, have been found on the? I mean, there's a car on a freeway. It would have been found on the fourth by an officer or somebody. You well, would think. so is there any evidence that it was there on the fourth? Like somebody remembers driving by it on the fourth, and we know that you know July third. Then he gets up on July fourth. Sherry reports her missing on the fifth. Mm-hmm. On the fifth. And what day was it? Then car? yeah, they're calling the whole family, saying, you know, she's missing, she's missing, and somebody sees that vehicle on the fifth. So it is possible that when Sherry saw Brooks, Brooks got his ass into gear and went and dumped her somewhere on the farm and her, him or the brother put the car on the bluegrass parkway. Mm-hmm. So maybe she was in the trunk for a little bit because nobody reported that car there on the fourth. So the car could have very well been on the farm or wherever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but um, it seems like uh, the car was put there. I want to know if anybody saw the car on the fourth on that because that's where it, when it should have been there because she would have left right. during the night be, of early morning on the 4th and just left it there and any cop would have pulled over and and said exactly. you know saw an abandoned vehicle there yeah yeah all right I mean obviously we're talking right now just the people the grand jury no, that's the, the only other person you've talked to about this investigation mm-hmm. is the grand jurors and us three people in this room yeah very little with Chief. I mean, mm-hmm. did you have you talked about it with your girlfriend? Very little. I mean, like I said, we didn't really hang out with Crystal or anything. So I mean, I haven't went into any any detail with her. Well, I mean, is she? I know, I know the typical woman is going to ask ten million questions around something big that you were. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we we're both married. We know how our wives are. What about this? What about this? What about that? Really, Amber's really not like that. I'm not like that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you talk to any of the other officers here? I mean, y'all are obviously no, I've been, off. I've been off work. I mean, he just put me on paid leave or administrative. I mean, did, did he tell you not to talk to anybody about the investigation, or is it just do do you not socialize with a whole lot of people from work outside of work? Or no, I mean, I don't see a lot of them at work. Um, I know, you know, with us. The guys that we work with, we're we're talking on the phone all the time. We're we're real social with each mm-hmm. other. Is that just not the case here? Or? Yeah, I haven't talked to anybody about it. Okay. But just it. just in general, I mean, are you I'm are you right. social with with the guys you work with? Like yeah. Jason Ellis, did you talk to him a lot? When oh, you worked with him. Well, yeah. I mean, I talked to all the guys, but I mean, it's not like we hang out on the weekends together or anything okay. like that. So. But when you're here at work, you talk about oh, stuff. Oh, most definitely. Any, has, uh, any of the officers or anybody come and approach you and ask you questions about the case? You know, uh-huh. Instead of knowing that you're kind of close to the, they have, they the family. Haven't, they haven't asked. Okay. And you have it to, you have or you haven't talked to your brother about this case? I haven't. <laughs> Very little to nothing. Bullshit. So I mean, what, what, how did the conversation go <laughs> when he said, he you just decide to call him during the interview. Yeah, the and drive together to a, the farm. I can't remember, I can't remember how they stated. He just, I guess, just said they were going to interview him. And that may have been like his second. I mean, did he seem? Did he seem nervous? Was he scared? Was he asking for advice? Was he confiding no, in you? Like, what was he? Brooks, the same old Brooks. Well, I mean, if you don't talk that much generally, and your brother calls you, there's got to be some reason he's well, calling you. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he, he calls me from time to time. It's not like we just completely ignore one another, mm-hmm. but we don't just hang out all the time. But if he called you, you know, that day, what would what, what did he say? I had no idea. I mean, you're, you're the only one that was on the phone line with him that time, right? Just you and him. I mean, no. There wasn't anybody else. It wasn't a three-way call. It was no, his, no. his phone calling you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can't remember anything that was said at all. No. He didn't say, hey, should, is there something I should do? You know, should I wear a nice shirt? Should, you know, Brooks has got a calm should stance. I fix my hair? You know, that kind of thing. Brooks, no, nah, Brooks, he's just uh, kind of a construction worker. I mean, he's come right on in here. I mean, he's not a, 
He's not like that. But I mean, he, he obviously knows that you know more about police work than what he does. Well, obviously. So he's, you know, if you've got a question about how to frame something and, and it's something he's better at than you, you're going to call him and ask him, right? Yeah, but Brooks didn't have anything to hide. I mean, no, he hadn't asked me anything like that. You know, Brooks, Brooks hadn't changed any. You know? So he was just saying, hey, if you need a, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm going to be up here at the PD doing an interview. Kind more of or less. Thing. But then you, you called him back because you were just worried because you had no well, really wasn't Did he say, I'm gonna, I'll call you when I'm done? Is that what he no, said? he didn't say he'd call me when he was done. <clears throat> no, and I mean, it's not that I was really worried. I just, like I said, he's just a, Brooks is a really cooperative person. And with things spinning like they are, I just wanted to be sure that, you know, things were done the right way. Sure. I mean, I know you made mention of one officer here that, that you think might not be you know, the most trustworthy person in, in your words. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there, I mean, is there anything else that goes on around here? I mean, is the whole department like that, or is it just? No, no, I mean, we've got a really good department. Okay. I can't knock the department at all. In the sheriff's department as well? Yeah, there's a lot of good guys over there. So, I mean, you obviously had some reservations about something because you called him. It, it was just that one officer, that's the only reason why? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just. Like how, I said, how did you How did you know that Snow was the one interviewing him, not one of us? Well, I, I just assumed that I guess since he'd been interviewed before, that you know, I mean, he was the one handling it. So, I mean, there's other good officers here. What if it was like Kaminsky mm. or somebody else? <laughs> yeah, I don't think. that's because Brooks told him prior that I'm going to be interviewed by this particular detective. <laughs> this guy of course, is, but they never talk about any of this stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I've like been there before. I've even known. Him. So you, you knew that Snow was going to be the one interviewing him because he told you that Snow called him? Is that what you're saying? I can't even really remember that. I just He just said he was going to be interviewed, and I guess since Snow had interviewed him before, that I just assumed that he'd be the one doing the interview again. So. Oh, gosh, he lies just to lie. Let's check something real quick and we'll be right back. Okay. All right, so this is the part where it pauses. and He, he literally sits. Okay, hold on a second. Watch this. Mm -hmm. So when this door shuts, like he just sits almost... Like completely still like this for 10 minutes because he actually knows yeah. he's on camera but he kind of moves a little bit but look at him he just rarely does he move he's like it's crazy but anyways we i cut up nine of the minutes but we're done this is the uh, where we're going to pause it for yes i think we have gosh we've got probably two at least two more parts to crystal and then at least yeah at least two, I think. And then I really do want to um, focus on the search and Tommy Ballard. Oh, yeah. Uh, Definitely got to get to uh, Tommy Ballard. Uh, th th I mean, that story is just definitely a huge part of it. Yeah. And then, you know, all the recent happenings and all of that stuff. There might be like three or four more shows. Really. I think there's going to be. Because <laughs> <Yeah. yeah. laughs> we're, I mean, I don't even know if we can get through. Well, we might be able to get. Through Nick and part of the, I don't know how long the polygraph one was. I didn't I remember how long. That was a good amount, wasn't it? Like forty minute man. Yeah, so maybe we could do both of those and then be done with that part in one, and then that would probably be the end of that. Nick, yeah. you know that part of it, and then we move on to uh, whatever you have left for uh, Crystal, and then Tommy, and then sort of the newer developments. So maybe three more shows, probably. It, yeah, it could go. I mean, it might yeah. even be four. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a lot, you know, you don't want to leave it out. I think that all of it's pretty important. Yeah. And that there's just so many details and the things that have gone on and, you know, what's happened since then, since all of this happened. It's it's so much. Uh, my but gut. my gut. <laughs> I just think that, um, you know, there was stuff that Crystal knew. She was also going to probably she would probably get custody and then he would actually owe this a bunch of child support and then but not having control of her she could say whatever the stuff was that she knew about him and because she was leaving he couldn't take that risk and probably nick couldn't take that risk either because it's probably something that combines both of them and so they decided to kill crystal and they set it up oh it's going to be a date night and so they drove out to the mother or their farm I guess and uh, she was probably going to babysit the kid there and that's what Crystal thought too so they just had to make a quick stop there but that was when something 
happened to her? Probably strangled, mm-hmm. I would think. I mean, I'm, this is just what my opinion is. Strangled, and then it's just been cover up since. You know, the car is completely bogus, put on the highway with the flat tire, and, uh, you know, doesn't match. I mean, he either. was an abusive man. He was yeah. not a good person at all. He yeah. abused, he had hit Crystal before. Uh, there were some other incidents as and, well. And the daughter, too. Remember? And the Crystal's daughter. Um, he he just wasn't a good man. He was uh, very strange when it came to the kids, you know, like buying food for Eli uh, from their account, but not allowing that to happen from their account when it came to Crystal's children, as if they were some sort of, you know, parasites or something. I mean, you're their... You're not their stepdad, but, you know, you'd been together a while and they're in the house with you. So also, I think I really, truly do believe this. This is still my theory so far. I think these two brothers are involved in something nefarious that includes people in that town. It could be drugs. It could be something Mm -hmm. else. I think Nick is connected to Jason's. Yeah, murder. I did too. Um, I think they are very familiar with that uh, gang, the Bardstown Money Gang. And I Tommy think Ballard. Crystal found something else. I think the yeah. Netherlands is the one that could be not related. I mean, you could maybe try to find something. I think that could be gang related, yeah. but I don't know that it's connected to them because they were outspoken, you know, about gangs being in the area, but. I mean, they could have been, you know, a gang initiation thing or something. It's really weird that it's that random, but it was so brutal that it almost seemed personal what was done to them, yeah. to that family. I don't think it's premeditated. Hmm. This whole thing. I mean, don't you? The crystal. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the crystal. Absolutely premeditated. Uh, and, yeah. And, it's, and having a brother as a police officer made it so that's why they're not arrested right now because there was enough done to cover it up and um, mm-hmm. just, man, it's brutal. Yeah, it's, and, and, and I mean, she's got, you know, the Justice for Crystal group. There are so many people who want justice for Crystal, and uh, the fact that it hasn't happened is uh, outrageous. It's yeah. outrageous to me, so. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, hey, you guys, if you want to become a channel member, you should do so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it would be awesome. Yeah, you get to use, you have the emojis, and at some point we might do it where it's just you know channel members get to chat because that way you avoid the troll uh, trolls like the one that showed up a few minutes ago. I mean, unless you're hey, I tell you what, if you want to pay a monthly fee to be a troll, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can be like blank screen and just sort of show up. <laughs> it doesn't, hey, it's okay, it's okay. If you want to be blank screen and just... Uh, uh, blank screen's everywhere, I swear. <laughs> he probably watches these too. This yeah. is probably when he gets to take his break. Like, oh, hey, they're on. I'm not going to mess with them today. Yeah, that's so. right. But hey, thank you to uh, Plato earlier on, and then uh, Dreaming Girl, and then it was uh, Vet Girl, RWB, and then we've got new member, TTGO, Tracy... Your Gypsy, Malfi, uh, Dova Johnson, and then uh, thank you, Cordy, for the donation. Juddy, Judy, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Juddy. <laughs> yeah, I, I say Juddy, but I, sometimes mm-hmm. I say Judy. <laughs> I go, it's <laughs> either Judy or Juddy is what I say. I do too. Like Grady Judd, you know. And then uh, Reluctant Healer, thank you to, and then welcome Mary and Julie, Julie Bear L to the channel and then we got vet girl with the crazy donation thank you very much and shelly stewart cass lynn became a channel member she's like a expert on uh, crystal rogers since she's friends yes. with, she's friends with the wife of um, jason ellis and also knows you know she lives there so and then uh thank you malfi and quietly frozen that's like one of my favorite names on youtube Quietly frozen. Quietly frozen? Yeah, it's just so cool. It's like quietly frozen. What? <laughs> you know. guys are awesome. Thank yeah. you for coming over today. I know there was probably, you know, a bunch of other drama stuff you guys could have watched, but you came over here. So that makes us happy, makes us want to keep doing stuff like this. So, and yeah. definitely thanks for joining in the super chat. You guys are great. Oh, and what, um, by the way, I'm, I'm not part of a 
a secret cabal or anything <laughs> like that. I, I heard there, there was a YouTuber t- saying that I was part of some, I wanted in on something. And I yeah. don't normally, I don't normally give or, or I'm not kind to other YouTubers, which is complete bullshit. Okay. Um, yeah. The truth it is. It was that Gray's <laughs> only kind to me and, and to cracking cases. Uh, I've known Gray. Uh, this is not a new relationship whatsoever. Gray and I have known each other since 2017. And Gray has always been nice to me. And he donates more than pretty much any other channel on YouTube. So. Yeah. Well, it's just sort of a weird thing when you hear somebody that doesn't give a nickel to uh, a soul out there t- trying to tell people that, that I don't. Oh, he's giving money to cracking cases on his show. Here's the thing, everybody. They tried to bully. I'm just going to tell you. He, they tried to bully Cam to get off. And he, and he was going to like quit making YouTube. But I, I, I messaged him, text messaged him, because I was on a show once. So I had his phone number. And I said, don't let those people get you off of there. And he said, well, thank you. That means a lot. You know, that's that's it. But I was that's at, the extent. <laughs> yeah, it was like. Gray was, came on because he's an expert with maps. And Cam wanted to show something. Gray came up. You know, I asked Gray to come up. Hey, can you come up? These guys are really nice people, et cetera, whatever. So now Gray, myself, and Cam are a group. And allegedly, we are in with uh, some guy who runs the Wells website. Yeah. So we're, you know. We have non disclosure. I have a non disclosure agreement. (laughs) Now, there might be people out there that have. This, I don't. And what, you know what's funny is I, the guy is that ran that I website. Know. I know his name now because uh, a friend of I mine told, told me. You. Yeah, well, yeah, you told me, and then somebody, well, somebody else told me first, and then I, I don't want to throw her name out there. But. Yeah, that's how you knew because when you asked me, I'm like, what? Yeah, I had no clue who that's that person was. So dumb. And it was just really bizarre. It's, um, I mean, I it's, actually super. I give super chats all over the place all the time to just r- uh, random people, you know, like I've given it to PCI Predator Hunter. I mean, I don't even, I'm not gonna go through it. I don't need to explain No, of myself. course not. You know, Your reputation uh, speaks for itself. Because you do not, you know, you're not so fond of certain people, we're all allowed that. You can be fond of some people, not so fond of others. But to try to throw people into a conspiracy, especially in the Summer Wells case, mm-hmm. where you have thousands of people listening, it's really not the mature thing to do. This is a crime case. We're all creators. If there are questions, Gray has his email on his channel. I have mine on my channel. It's very transparent as to what is trying to be done. Uh, you're using our names in order to, you know, get like a, try to yeah. demean us, right? And yeah. that's not going to work. So yeah, and the, and the the strange thing is like I was I I did go on to a chat. And what happened was, I, I need to say this because it was on, you know, a channel. And I went on there, and they were t- talking about in the summer in the Summer Wells case how it would be, um, let's see, um, a uh, abuse or neglect, yeah, abuse or neglect in in at the home. And you know, maybe there is abuse and neglect. I, I don't know, but what I said was that um, in the case that Summer was abducted abuse and neglect wouldn't be related to that at all exactly. I, said, I said there was no there was no neglect or abuse if summer was um, abducted. abducted okay because that would mean somebody just came in and grabbed her you're not required to stare at your child every second while you're at your house okay so why is that so hard for people to understand well yeah. because they think gray is me and i am gray <laughs> because yeah. i say i'm not going to bash the parents Gray making that statement to people who can't critically think is, oh, he's just talking like his partner. And yeah. he's saying those kids were never neglected. But if you read his sentence and you can comprehend things, <laughs> you can see exactly what he said. Yeah, that's exactly what I And so that was happening in the chat. Everybody was blasting me. Oh, my God, how <laughs> dare you? And I go. Well, listen, idiots, if you can't understand what I typed. Oh, Gray's trolling, everybody. Gray's trolling. See how that works? It's like this passive aggressive bullshit. Okay. I wasn't doing anything wrong. No. And I didn't say anything wrong. And, you know, amazingly, uh, you know, Doctora Latina seemed to understand it. She was up there. She understood what I was saying. 
and she kept trying to say it, but that w- they didn't want that because that wasn't going to be the drama that was needed to keep propelling the show into craziness. Okay. Yep. And Gray and I right. have talked, you know, behind the scenes a number of times. The real true crime community is not like this. And I get asked this question all the time. Is true crime always like this? No, it's the people who go live, like Gray, myself, you know, because that invites in all kinds of personalities and you're competing for views, it seems. People don't want to collaborate. Instead, they want to cause drama because drama brings views. I'm going to say this, okay? And I I sincerely mean this. I don't like to communicate with other people. It's not my thing. Uh, To work with Gray is very easy because his reputation is so solid that there's nobody else that I would trust to do this with. He's been here forever. He's covered hundreds of cases. He's done nothing but help people, real help, not pretend help where we're pretending we're doing something good. No, actual help. That's what he's done. He donates more than anybody I've ever seen. I will not have him insulted. You're not going to break up our friendship. That'll never happen. You're not going to spread rumors about us. We're going to keep doing what we do. And we're going to let them do what they want to do. I'm not going to respond to them unless it's with Petty Betty, because in my opinion, they're a joke. They yeah. couldn't compare to Gray Hughes on their best day. So... Oh wow! I, I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say such nice. He things didn't know like I that. was going to say any of that, but <laughs> well, thank just you. so we're all clear, <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. Well, thank you. That was very kind. Well, I mean, I really enjoy working with you. Like that, it's so fun going over these cases and trying to. Yeah, figure I out. wouldn't do it with anybody else. I just would not. I don't do a bunch of collaborations. It makes me feel weird. I get nervous. I, I don't know if people are going to think the same way that I do. And you always let me be myself so it's it's easy and again even when we don't agree the respect i have for you is immense the, the what you've done on your channel i challenge anybody to show me another true crime creator who's done the same i will wait i don't yeah. don't there is nobody yes you're very snarky and you're fresh but that's part of your charm <laughs> yeah some people like it unless you're i guess when you're on the receiving end of it but the thing is if you're just okay with it and you come back the next day it's i don't even remember it you know nobody cares that you were you might have said something crazy you know like oh an alien might have come you know right Uh, people get their feelings hurt uh this is real life you know in the real world uh, it doesn't bode too well for snowflakes this is really the real world he's talking about people being murdered and you know trying to get find projects for DNA to identify people and when somebody comes in with an asshole comment he's going to treat you kind of like an asshole that's just the way that life works you know yeah if you are very sensitive I always recommend don't go to Grace chat because he will <laughs> let yeah. you know what he thinks <laughs> yeah and and uh you know the thing what one of the things that's uh sort of sad is you know when I when I'm do, doing my regular true crime shows going over cases you know, it doesn't seem like, you know, I might have, you know, 250 to 400 people watching. And then at the same time, there'll be a live show going on that's nothing but drama and bullshit. And everybody watching it claims they're true crime fans. Yeah. But but you're not, though. And that's the reality. You're not. You're, you're drama fans, okay? Because I, I always get so dis... I always think to myself, man, imagine if I could get 1,700 people watching... A, my true crime channel because they want to try to make a difference how much more money we could be donating to uh you know yeah. charities and yeah, i mean Wonderful it's just charities. and getting stuff done i mean i donate over 50 percent of my net income on youtube to charities yeah. and uh we you know last year you know that daniel armantrout thing was such a huge that's the best feeling i've almost ever had in my life to be honest with you and then um uh, you know, we've got two other cases fully funded, and now we're working on a third one. A fourth, I mean. <laughs> Excuse me, a fourth one, which is crazy, right? I mean. It is. You know, they actually, you know, I don't know. It's a good feeling. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing that we have to do, as much as it's aggravating, and Gray and I go back and forth on this all the time, is uh, ignore it, right? Uh, because if we're saying we really want to do, you know, the true crime, and we want to have integrity, and we really want to focus on this, mm-hmm. We cannot 
go into those chats. We cannot yeah. think, oh, you know, they've got 1,800 people watching drama, and I, I really have something great to say today, and I want yeah. people to know about this. Yeah. It, it, it's useless because I, both of us are the type who want to smack back and say something back. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really difficult not to go It's in. hard, too, when they actually mention you by name on a show not to say something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was yeah. mentioned, and they're like, I think she signed the NDA, and I'm thinking, who? Who's not yeah. me? It just shows what a so, weird, uh, psycho, <laughs> kind of conspiracy theory nut job that person is. But Yeah, it's just, anyway. it's absolutely wild around here. It is. And I am in constant defense mode, I've realized, since, you know, July. And I don't want to be like that. That's not That's not what we're on here for. So, if we're not helping... We're part of the problem that is on YouTube that people complain about. And I don't want to. So yeah. I don't want to do that. All right. You're going to have to. And that's it. That's <laughs> okay. not preaching, Gray. What is wrong with you? Well, well we've had this conversation. It's hard. We well, have. Well, over and, 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 over. and you have your little Betty person, so you were able to do it. But pretend it wasn't you know, like, you know. I guess yeah. I could have Mary Lou do a, a whole segment. You should see. <laughs> Great, I heard that you yeah, get that one out there. Yeah, that'd be I heard awesome. you signed an NDA, Craig. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You and Jason share one brain. <laughs> that was the craziest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. To be honest with you, uh, not ever, but like it was just wow. I'm part <laughs> of some weird, you know, <laughs> secret sort of society underneath the. Yeah, it's just oh, unbelievable. God help me. It's all right. funny. But anyways, hey, thanks. Thank you all very much for uh, coming here today and uh, supporting the channel, uh, hitting the like button, it. doing the uh, super chats, the eight new channel members. Thank you. But uh, definitely consider becoming a channel member because I think we have, it might be a good way to do it at some point is to just do chat for channel members because that way you just absolutely have almost no chance of a troll being in there. Yeah, because they're usually Much cheap, cheap ass bastards who <laughs> they're cheap people who wouldn't want to spend whatever the hell it is to troll just for a minute. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys very much, and uh, hey, it was good seeing you again. Maybe just hang out on here for a minute or two, but uh, <laughs> oh god, great! <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, we'll be back on. What do you think? Might be good Tuesday, maybe or. Thursday? Well, you just tell me your day during the we'll week. We'll have to chat. I don't know. Yeah. All right. We'll figure out the next day to do part uh, three, episode three. Part three. three, episode three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, so, Jilly Bear. Who the hell knows came up with it? They're all loony. Yeah. Anyway. And we won't be talking during the, <laughs> yeah, during the exit. I won't. Well, I like your buffering. Yeah, 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 I just got connected. Survive? It is now. Yeah, it's on there now. You're breaking it. All right, everybody. See you later. Whew.